MASL TV welcomes you inside the Coom in Hermosillo, Mexico, where Sol Estesonor and the Baltimore Blast are set for game two of the MASL Championship. I'm your host, Mark Serber, and it's a pleasure to be with you in front of what is a very expectant crowd tonight. It's a very familiar situation with everybody here in the Major Arena Soccer League. Game two of the finals between the Baltimore Blast and Solis de Sonora. And we remember what happened last year, one of the most epic matches ever in the history of indoor soccer, as the Baltimore Blast took the title 14 to 13 in overtime on a goal 28 seconds into that extra period by Tony Donatelli off a of feed from Pat Healy. But it's a very, very different situation this time around in the fact that Solis de Sonora comes back to Hermosillo with the 1-0 lead, and if they can get the win tonight, they will be crowned the MASL champions. So Baltimore has a very tough task of beating Solis de Sonora in Sonora, where they are a perfect 12-0 this season. With that said, however, there is only two teams that have ever won here inside the Centro de Usos Multiplace, and one of them is the Baltimore Blast, where they took the title last season in that incredible match. As the Baltimore Blast has been introduced, they're out on the field, and now we are waiting for the entrance of Solis de Sonora. Mark Serber with you here on MASL TV. Pleasure to be with you for what is sure to be an incredible game here tonight. The Baltimore Blast trying to do not just the impossible of winning one game here at Sonora, but the double impossible of winning and then winning again in the mini game, something that is so hard to do. The San Diego Soccers last season were able to come in here and win 13 to 10, even up the series at one, but then they ran out of gas and lost six nothing in the mini game. However, this is a Baltimore side that is very prepared. They know what they need to do. Talk to a lot of the players before the game and they said you know what we've looked at the film we know the mistakes that we made we just didn't take our chances and we're gonna play better here tonight this is a very confident baltimore blast side one thing they're gonna have to do though is break the high pressure of solace de sonora which they had a lot of trouble doing in baltimore on friday night in the four to two loss and it's going to become that much harder here on a pitch that has much smaller dimensions As Solis de Sonora getting ready to make their way out onto the field. The word is that all 8,600 seats have been sold out here tonight in Hermosillo, the capital of Sonora in Mexico. However, fans still filing in. And volume rising as Diego Reynoso set to lead Solis de Sonora out onto the field. Solis de Sonora, perfect 12-0 this season. They score goals in bunches here. 17-3 in their first home playoff game against Atletico Baja to take that series two games to love. And then swept the San Diego Soccers with 11-10 victory in that one. However, San Diego mounted a late comeback. Solis were ahead by a lot of goals. For the Baltimore Blast, they got here via the mini game in both rounds. Coming back from an 0-1 deficit against the Harrisburg Heat, winning the next game and going through in the mini game. And then took the first game at Royal Farms Arena against Milwaukee before losing the next one 8-4. However, winning 2-1 in the mini game before falling 4-2 in the first championship match on Friday night. The Solis de Sonora players being introduced. It's the side that scored 230 goals during the regular season. The next best scoring side scored 81 goals fewer in the San Diego Soccers, who mustered what next to the 230 sounds like a really sad 149. Frank, the King Taiyu being introduced. The reigning MVP, will he win it two years in a row? We will find out at halftime when that announcement is made by the Major Arena Soccer League. 230 goals during the regular season. How about 49 goals in just five games here in the postseason for this Solis de Sonora side? However, 
only four against Baltimore that did very well in the defensive end, but early mistakes killed them. They were goals that these Baltimore players felt they should have never given up. And they said, you know what? We also did a really good job of controlling them, only giving up four goals against such a high octane offense. However, we did not take our chances at the other end. And that is something that the likes of Andrew Hoxie and many other players said. They said, you know, we have to start hitting the target. They had a lot of good opportunities. Lucas Roque, for my money, was a player who by his high standards did not have his best night in front of goal. Even shots from in and around outside the arc and the red line back at Royal Farms Arena were going high and wide. If they can get them on to target here tonight, it will be a much different picture for this Baltimore side. And it's going to have to be in a place where you know goals will be scored at both ends for this Baltimore defense. They're gonna have to step up to Solis de Sonora everywhere on the field because this is a Sonora team that loves to fire at will. The likes of Damian Garcia and Roberto Escalante out of the back. Mauricio Salas, the Brazilian up front. They will shoot whenever they get a half yard of space anywhere from beyond their own yellow line all the way into goal. So any half yard of space and William Benzella is gonna have to be careful in the Baltimore goal. As you'd expect, they say, offense wins games and defense wins championships. Two of the best goalkeepers going head to head here tonight in William Vanzella for the Baltimore Blast and Diego Reynoso for Solis de Sonora. William Vanzella, second team all MASL, finished the season first in goals against average and second in save percentage at 3.34 and .728 respectively. Diego Reynoso finishing just behind William Vanzella in goals against average with just 5.94 given up a game, seventh in save percentage. And coming into tonight in the playoffs, it's Diego Reynoso who leads in save percentage and William Vanzella who leads in goals against throughout the postseason. Just listen to this crowd here. What an amazing atmosphere at the Coom in Hermosillo, Mexico, the capital of Sonora. It's the coaching staff now being introduced. Solis de Sonora and the Baltimore Blast facing off for the finals for the second straight year. Big difference this time around here in game number two in Hermosillo. It's Sonora who have the one nothing lead. For the Baltimore Blast, they are looking for their ninth overall title. They have been in the finals of whatever league they've been playing in since 2010, 2011. Tremendous job done by Danny Kelly. As we will now step aside and listen to the national anthems of the USA and Mexico. And then it's game number two in the Rom Newman Cup.
The pregame festivities continuing at the Coombe as Solis de Sonora is getting set to take on the Baltimore Blast in game number two of the Ron Newman Cup. Solis de Sonora have the 1-0 lead after a 4-2 win in Baltimore on Friday night and are looking to take care of things here in game two and not have to go through the fire of a mini game, which if needed will take place 15 minutes after the conclusion of game number two here tonight. Baltimore, just one of two teams to ever win here in Sonora. And that was in last year's final, game number two, in that 14 to 13 incredible overtime victory. One of the best indoor soccer matches ever. And if tonight is anything quite like what we witnessed last year, then you are in for a real treat. As the anthems have been played, Players lined up there getting ready, just waiting for the Army to clear the field after a wonderful job of presenting the colors and the national anthems of both Mexico and the United States. And then it's down to business. Solis de Sonora took game one, four to two at Royal Farms Arena just two days ago. Both teams spent all day yesterday traveling across the US and into Mexico for game number two here this evening. The Baltimore Blast traveled to San Diego, had a long layover before their flight in Tijuana, so they actually went and hung out at the beach for a couple hours before walking over the border into Tijuana International Airport for their evening flight to Sonora. Got in at about 9.15 last night, and this Baltimore team has been all business ever since arriving in Sonora. It's the continuation of the battle of the league's best offense in Solis de Sonora. 230 goals in the regular season and a further 49 goals in five games here in the playoffs versus the league's stingiest defense in the Baltimore Blast. Just 69 goals given up in the regular season and only 30 goals given up here in seven playoff games. And both teams were standing on those yellow lines for a long, long time. So moving around once again to get those legs going. There's a presentation going on in the center circle with Josh Schwab, the commissioner of the Major Arena Soccer League, addressing the crowd here at the Coom. Jeff Husted is down on the field right now, but he will join me for color commentary during the match. And Schwab welcoming the crowd. Solis de Sonora are to your left. They are in their maroon jerseys with yellow trim. And the Baltimore Blast in their white away jerseys. On a right will be attacking to the left once this game does kick off. Because it's one of those things, you get ready, you get amped up. Go through the anthems and all you want to do is get that kickoff going. The anticipation the adrenaline, the nerves are high, but you usually calm down with that first kick of the ball as you get into the game. Can the Baltimore Blast do what is virtually the impossible and win two games tonight here in the Coombe against Solis de Sonora? Sonora, the regular season champions for the second year running, it's 17 and three. Taking on the Eastern Conference champions, Baltimore Blast, who went 14 and six during the regular season before dispatching of the Harrisburg Heat and the Milwaukee Wave in order to make it through to the finals. 
William Venzella in goal for the Baltimore Blast has played every game this season. 32 year old Brazilian won the Futsal World Cup with Brazil back in 2011 and was named the keeper's best keeper of that tournament. 2014-2015 MASL Keeper of the Year as well. This is Baltimore's third straight championship against the Mexican side. Of course, it was this same Solis de Sonora team last year, and the year before that, it was Monterey. So right now in the history of the MASL, it's 1-1 between the USA and Mexico. Monterey taking the first title in overtime in Monterey. The Baltimore Blast getting their revenge here in Sonora a year ago in overtime against Solis de Sonora. And now Solis de Sonora looking for their revenge as I'm joined now by Jeff Husted. It is 1-1 between the U.S. and Mexico. Jeff, who is going to take this one tonight? You know, it's going to be a tough call. What an atmosphere right here between these two teams. This stadium is great. This is what you want a championship to be. Now, you've got the, the best defense throughout the season in the Baltimore Blast. You've got the best offense throughout the season in Soles de Sonora. What's going to give today? You know, the other day, it was the defense of Baltimore that gave. Who knows what could happen today? The Baltimore Blast will kick off attacking to your left as the fans enjoying themselves here at a sold out Centro de Usos Multiplex as we are all set for game number two between the Baltimore Blast and Solis de Sonora. Solis de Sonora has the 1-0 advantage courtesy of their 4-2 win on Friday night. And the Blast right away looking for the game's first goal but Reynoso standing tall. How about that start for Baltimore? Come right back down and just start prepping the, uh, the Sonora defense right away. And it's one of those things, Jeff, where on this type of field, you can't really look to possess the ball out of the back. A lot of the Baltimore players told us before, in this game, it's about getting the ball forward quickly, and then maybe we can look to set up our offense. Exactly, and that's what Sonora has done so well all season long and why they're the highest scoring team. They get the ball, and their immediate first turn is to look for a shot. Even if it doesn't go on frame, it's going to bounce to one of their players. And that's what Baltimore worked on all week about doing here in this, uh, in this venue. And Dantas won the foul, lines up just to the right of the goalkeepers. This one played in, and the chance may be on here. Dantas tries to play it off the boards. And it was a bit of a battle between Raimondo Contreras and Diego Reynoso as to who was going to take it. And the keeper wins it to keep Solis de Sonora in this 0-0 at the moment as here comes King Tayu held scoreless on Friday night and he wins the first kick in for Solis de Sonora. And that's Baltimore's strength right there. They get anything they can in front of the ball. Oh. Contreras had a great job by Venzela to come out and cut down the angle and the rebound just over. And then Hiram Ruiz skies the third chance into the mesh. Ruiz with a goal and assist on Friday night. And one thing that Danny Kelly told me was, so many people think the ball just hits off of Vanzella, but he does such a great job of challenging shooters and cutting down angles that it's really his positioning. So he's making really tough saves look easy because he's already in position where other keepers are flying across their goal mount to make it. And him challenging a shooter, that was a perfect example right there. He'll never be uh, mistaken for one of the biggest players in the league, but when he comes out and challenges that ball, he makes himself real big all the time. Well, the fans didn't like the referees changing that call. And Dos Santos gets it forward. Baltimore working the ball through the lines. Played off the boards. And beaten to it is Reynoso, and it's cleared off the line. Hoxie, little touch off, and Santana fires it over. Well, Nelson Santana, he knows all about playing in atmospheres like this. A veteran joined from Ontario and has won multiple championships throughout his career. You know, he, he brings the veteran leadership to this team. But Baltimore is full of veteran leaders, so that's why they've been here seven straight years. This one played in for Kanyez, and he fires wide and smartly headed back to Vanzella by Santana. Kanyez leading the playoffs with eight goals. That's such a dangerous player, Kanyez. He also had a goal and assist on Friday night, as this is going to be a kick in for the blast. Just over a minute played, still 0-0. However, chances at both ends, and that's what we expected tonight. Santana rolls it wide of Donatelli. Reynoso comes out of his goal and will send it downfield. And Santana again. 
And the Blast have done a good job so far of keeping possession in this game. Donatelli pushes it forward. Taken by Kanyas, spins in midfield. Lovely work from Kanyas. Gets it over to Mauricio Salas. And the Brazilian, one of many players that will fire at will. You can't give him half a yard of space. No, and that's been his thing ever since he came into this league with Rochester in, oh, I don't remember how many years ago. But so when he came here, this was just the ideal fit for him because he can just shoot. He can score from either goal mouth, really. He joined in a midseason transition from the Ontario Fury and since then has rifled in 15 goals and six assists for Solis de Sonora. So that was a great acquisition for the Suns. You know, and I asked uh, the coaching staff for Sonora, how does he fit? What, what does it mean to the team? You know, and they still think that he can get better with this team. He's still finding his, his groove. And I, I mean, I'm telling you, if, if he can still get better, that's scary for teams to come. Tigerish work from Pereira. He almost wins it back, and the Blast want a foul, and they're going to get it. So it'll be a free kick from a very dangerous position as Junatas Melo was taken to ground. Melo and Dantas over it. Two of the eight Brazilians on this roster for the Baltimore Blast side in conversation about how they're gonna handle this free kick. And it's gonna be Dantas. And Reynoso's wall had firm foundations. Looking at counter is Solis de Sonora as Lopez running up the boards and a great job by Baltimore to recover. Now somehow still going as Lopez and it's gonna be a handball against Pereira. It's one of those professional fouls right there. Didn't know where the ball was, just started rolling over, trying to slow down the play. Contreras stands over it. Tayu hiding in the far corner. Pat Healy did such a good job to marshal Tayu in the first game and keep him off the board. Is this a direct shot on goal and a flying save by Vanzella? Tayu unable to work his way out of traffic. And Solis de Sonora will reset their runs as the ball comes back to Reynoso over the three-quarter line. He tries to drive it in. You know, Dantas tried for the, the easy quick touch, tried to catch Reynoso out. But he had somebody streaking up on the left side. If he would have just taken one touch and, uh, and passed it across, that could have been another scoring opportunity for them. Reynoso loves to get up the field. Did score a goal in the playoffs last year against San Diego. So wouldn't be surprised if he pulls the trigger. Danny Kelly continuing to direct his defense. What a legend, Danny Kelly. Of the eight titles Baltimore has won, he has been a part of seven of them, whether as a player or a coach. You know, he's been in this game a few times, hasn't he? Uh, you know, he's the definition of cool under pressure. Being down one game to nothing, being up one game to nothing. It's still the same Danny Kelly. And it's the same Baltimore Blast. Even uh, in the uh, semifinal, the, the uh, conference championship, when they were down in Milwaukee, talk to him. He's not changing his game. It's the same Baltimore Blast strategy. Time and time again. Good defense provides good offense. That's the way Danny Kelly plays. Baez will get it back to his keeper. Under pressure from Cal Tibiano. Into the far corner. Reynoso, so calm under pressure. And Reynoso plays it into the midfield. Intercepted by Rayleigh. Rayleigh walks in and the shot is charged down by Baez. Segura leading the break. Invited to shoot and puts it wide. Still going for it, Segura. He wanted a handball, but instead it's gonna go against him. And the Blast gonna get out of jail free card there. Yeah, this place is so loud, I'm, I didn't actually hear you. I'm just saying that the Blast got the relief of the referee's whistle as Hoxie fires it just wide. Just a little bit earlier, Donatelli threaded a beautiful ball through to Hoxie at the back post that was just intercepted with a last ditch tackle, but it, it was barely similar to the way Baltimore scored their first goal on Friday night. It was, and one of the things I've been surprised about in this series. Another opportunity, and it's 1-1 in terms of both teams hitting the inside of the post. We continue here with Hoxie. One of the things I was gonna say that I was surprised of uh, was the way that Sonora has played defensively in this series. They're not known as a defensive stalwart, 
but they really came out and played their best defensive game of the season uh, in game one. And they're showing it again tonight. They're, they're getting back. They're, they're, they're uh, getting in the passing and shooting lanes and blocking that shot. I'll talk about Sonora's defense. They had nine blocks in Baltimore, and that's one thing they do so well. Just so willing to not only pressure high and always be on top of the player with the ball, but to sacrifice their body to get in the, the shooting lanes. Both teams are that way. It's all about the team rather than the individual for both sides. And you really got a sense of that hanging out with them the last couple of days as we traveled back and forth between Mal uh, Baltimore and Mexico. A free kick as Hiram Ruiz is tripped up on the far side. Boy, Just Mark, you come down here and the balls are flying, shots are flying, players are flying. We're having a great old time. So another opportunity for Solis de Sonora. They like to hit these direct on goal. Vanzella has a two-man wall set up. And it's going to be Garcia, and he wants that one back. So just over five minutes played, still no goals, but plenty of chances. What are your thoughts so far, Jim? This is what I expected. A great, exciting back and forth game. It may not be the highest scoring game that we've seen in this building before, but it's gonna be plenty of opportunities for both teams. You know, uh, I mean, Sonora came in and they, they won game one. It's gonna be, it's not an automatic thing for them to win game two. We could see the mini game, the first one of the playoffs for Sonora the, today. This is Pereira, Reynoso at his near post covered. Dantas gets back to Dos Santos, on for Pereira. His shot is charged down. Dos Santos plays it across and a flying header to get it clear. And that's gonna be three lines. So this one's gonna come all the way back to the top of the arc. And Venzella has called a timeout, so I think Danny Kelly wants to talk over how they're gonna play this. Well, Venzella just going over to get some water. A couple changes being made. Looked like some of the players were starting to walk toward the bench, but we're gonna play on here. 9-16 left in the first quarter. Still scoreless between the Blast and Solis de Sonor. Pereira looking to change that, but he has it stabbed away. And the Blast will look to hit the reset button through their keeper. Well, they wanted a high boot there in Contreras. They're not going to get it. And now Vanzella with some work to do. Goalkeepers want to be protected in that situation. And instead, yeah, they're going to get that foul. Yeah, you, you can't. You can't undercut the goalkeeper when he goes up. Even if he's out of his box, they're going to get the benefit of the doubt every time. That's a strong run from the 25-year-old Pereira. Donatelli tried to play it off the boards. He was looking for Dantas in the middle, and you could see him apologize there. Dantas was expecting it to come back off at an angle into the middle. Instead, it caromed around into the arms of Diego Reynoso. You know, and, and these boards, especially in the corner, they're more of a wood rather than the plexiglass that it is in most buildings, and the bounce is a little bit different. So the way you play a bounce pass at home may be a little bit different than the way it reacts here. Well, Cal Tibiano has been buzzing, but this one headed back to his keeper from Contreras. Long outlet ball, beautiful flick on Lopez, goes for the spectacular and almost pulled it off. And then Dos Santos did just enough to put off Tayu, and somehow it's still nil-nil here at the Coom. I'm telling you, if this is the only game uh, somebody who doesn't know the arena game sees all season long, you're going to be hooked for life. Well, this has been already back and forth. Lopez, Vanzella gets a hand on it. We've had some near misses. Two bicycle kicks now. Beyond the reach of Hoxie, Reynoso clears. Rosas playing his third straight championship match against the Baltimore Blast. Both Rosas and Rosales were on that Monterey side that beat the Blast in 2014, 2015. Diego Reynoso was also a member of that Monterey Flash team. However, a non-playing member as he got injured early on in the season. And this is Reynoso. He loves to have goes from here. And he's saved by his opposite number. Another good shot from Reynoso, but Vanzella's pumped. 
Yes, Reynoso wants himself a goal in this playoff series. Well, we've hit the media timeout. 7.42 left in the first quarter, still 0-0. I'm not sure how. I think it's the same thing as it was in Baltimore and the fact that it's just such great goalkeeping at both ends. Great goalkeeping, great defense, great sacrifices made by both defenses. You've already seen it now. Uh, you saw uh, Vinny Danta step in front of a shot, point blank. You saw several Sonora players step in front of shots. You're going to see some big, big time shots and big time offense, but right now the defense is coming to play in this building. And one of the things that was really interesting that Danny Kelly told us before this match, he said, you know, goals are going to come in bunches, whether they're for you or for the other team. You cannot get too high and you cannot get too low. You just know your opportunities are going to come, and they have come so far, but both goalkeepers are standing on their head. Well, the arena game itself is a game of momentum. Whoever has the momentum is the team that's going to be successful. And so, like you just said, Danny always preaches you got to remain calm because the momentum will switch if it's not going your way. Well, it's so interesting. Talking to coaches who were once players, he said, you know, one of the hardest things about being a coach is you get into an atmosphere like this, the uh, goals are flying in, the atmosphere is so hostile. He said, you know, you can no longer control the situation the way you could as a player. He said, so you just hope that you've prepared your team enough for this moment and you can make those little tweaks as a coach which will hopefully give your team the edge oh I'm, I'm sure he's jumping trying to you know wanting to get out there and play heck i never played and i want to jump out there in this atmosphere it's been great segura leaves it off and the shots charged down by donatelli and there's a guy in the regular season he played good defense but he's not a guy you would see throw himself down like he did just there Donatelli has fond memories of this place, scoring the overtime goal that won the title for the Blast last year. Has pushed on and clipped away from Donatelli, who applauds the effort. That was an important defensive play, otherwise Donatelli had a clear shot on goal. And that's gonna be three lines. Bad mistake from Solis de Sonora and another opportunity from the set piece for Pat Healy and this Baltimore Blast side. Smart veteran move by Pat Healy. Planted himself there on the yellow line, made it like he was gonna play, and at the last minute he pulled away for the three line violation. Three shooters, it's gonna be Healy, and it took a deflection onto the crossbar. The bike opening things up, and Dantas can't believe his luck. Falls kindly into the arms of Reynoso. Quick outlet. Solis looking for the counterattack, but Baltimore does well to get all five bodies behind the ball. Baez looking for options. Gets it into the pocket for Ruiz. Baez leaves it off for Garcia. Loves to hit him with that left foot. Something Danny Kelly talked about. Said, we study the tendencies of every player, and Damian Garcia is somebody we have to step up on anytime he has the ball past his own yellow line. He's pretty much the definition of an offensive defender. Beautiful ball in, and Cal Tibiano can't finish. You know, Mark, unlike game one, Baltimore has really stepped up, and they've actually controlled the ball and held much of the momentum in this first opening period. Dantas hooked away. Beautiful one-touch passing to get the ball out of their end. Ruiz running. Ruiz gets by one, can't get by two. That is the second stick that Pat Healy has made in quick succession. Fans wanted a handball, they're not gonna get it. Baltimore will go the other way. And Dantas will get whistled for the foul there. Good effort from Vinny Dantas, who leads the playoffs in points with 13. He's had himself quite a year this season. is Kanyes weaving his way through midfield. Contreras. Off the boards, looking for the target man. And Healy doing such a good job not allowing Kanyes to turn and have a go. However, it's going to be a defensive clearance. The ball will come back to the top of the arc. You know, we don't, we don't keep this stat in the MASL yet this year. But I would venture a guess that Pat Healy, who he's guarding, has taken the fewest shots all season long. 
he just does not allow uh, his, his uh, man to turn around. Pat Healy had 18 blocks during the regular season, came into tonight with 12 already in the playoffs. It's Melo, wins it off of Reynoso. Reynoso will get it back after good work from Gustavo Rosales. Garcia flying up the field. He's muscled off the ball. Baltimore looking to take advantage. Both of these teams swarm around the ball to win it back. Possession changing hands so quickly. That ball was cut off before it could find Hoxie. Both teams doing a great job to use their goalkeeper so far, Jeff, with those headers back. On a field like this, it's a lot. Of, the ball bounces off the wall, bounces off the other players quite a bit. It's pinballing around, so it's quite easy to just get on that ball and give a quick pass back to your goalkeeper. Rosas for Reynoso. As a goalkeeper, it's actually easier to receive that pass uh, out of the air. You can do more with it. As you saw just a minute ago with Diego Reynoso, that ball came to him so fast and so close to the goal, he wasn't able to get a good clearance out, and it popped straight up and to a Baltimore player. Hoxie able to keep possession for the blast. And the shot comes in, and Reynoso, usually so assured, fumbles that one, but is able to fall on it. Baez, Reynoso, chips it into midfield. Rolled along for Baez. He's given space to shoot. This one sneaks through to Tayu. He can't finish. Baez again, he wants to have a go, and the shot is blocked. You know, both teams came to play, the defense, the offense, and so did the post tonight. They've been great defense for both teams. Hope they got the red paint ready. They're going to need to repaint it at halftime. Ain't that the truth. Reynoso will walk it forward. Throws it down the ice. And out of bounds. So it'll be a goalie restart for William Vanzella. 2014-2015 MASL Keeper of the Year. Ready to distribute the ball for the blast. And out of bounds. Off of Solis last. Could have gone either way. It'll be a kick and blast. Final three and a half minutes as that one's wrestled clear. Push forward for Lopez, he's dispossessed. Rayleigh to go the other way. Strong tackle to keep the ball in midfield. Rosas curls it into the corner. That is a beautiful opening goal and it is absolute bedlam at the coup. You cannot tuck that more into the upper 90 than that one was right there. one nothing Solis de Sonora. As we waited almost 12 minutes for the game's first goal, but let me tell you, Jeff, it was worth it. What a strike from Eric Rosas. You know, and we're used to seeing great, exciting goals from, that, from this team here in this building. We've seen some great shots like that, but the way he gets just a, a hair of an opening and puts it right there in the corner, that's typical Sonora football right there. The ceremonial ball kicked into the upper deck. Inch perfect from Eric Rosas. And it is one nothing Solas de Sonora. Souvenir being battled for in the stands. The battle continues here on the field. Just over three minutes left in the first quarter and Solis have grabbed the game's first goal. You know, Mark, and now right here, this is where, where Danny Kelly's teachings have to come into play. Keep calm, keep relaxed, Santa and you get a goal right there. By Cal Tibiano, and we're level at one. Mere seconds in between the two goals. And that's because they didn't let the excitement, the atmosphere in this building get a hold of them. They kept playing, kept working the ball up the field. That was a perfect ball right off of the wall, right to Caltabiano. How quickly the cheers turned to jeers in Sonora. Caltabiano, Johnny on the spot to finish that one off. 
Oh, man, that was just another beautiful goal. This is arena soccer. This is what it's all about. We've got two of the best teams playing tonight and two of the best goals we've seen in this playoffs. Baez, Reynoso, Dantas chasing. One back in midfield by Baltimore. Santana using his body well. However, he's beaten out. The shot blocked by Melo. Next shot blocked. Two Baltimore players conspiring to get that one clear. And Solis will have to hit the reset button with just under two and a half minutes to play in the opening frame. Left on for Reynoso. Santana skies to win it. And he wins the free kick as well. Well, I'll tell you, I would not want to be a referee here. Even if you make the right call, you are going to have 8,600 people doing you. You just got to put in earplugs and just play your game, right, as a referee, because people are going to be thinking you're the best, and then two seconds later thinking you're the, the most hated person in this country. Vanzella rolls it along the boards for Hoxie. Escalante able to get it away from him, and a quick snapshot. Good reactions from Reynoso. This is a flying, flowing move from Sonora, one end to the other, and it's opened up the space for Baez. Kick, save, and a butte from William Vanzella. In the middle, Baez on the volley. Oh, you could see his eyes growing as the ball fell for him. And as spectacular as those are is when they come off, Jeff, that's probably one of the hardest skills to complete in soccer is to hit a ball that's coming down like that. You have to wait for it to drop that perfect height. It's coming down so fast, and you got so many people, so many things around you, to be able to hit it at the right spot is not an easy thing to do. 1-1 one, one inside the and final I, two minutes. And I'm not just saying that because I couldn't do it. 1-1 one, one inside the final two minutes of the first quarter. Cal Tibiano responding after Solis de Sonora opened the scoring through Eric Rosas. Hiram Ruiz slowing his way through and almost found the second goal for Solis de Sonora. And Vanzella was lucky to get a little bit of a touch on that rebound because Ruiz was following in on his shot. And if uh, Vanzella hadn't touched that, he was in to get one of those shots that we just talked about. On well, the first game on Friday night, Ruiz's passing was exquisite, especially on that opening goal for Sonora. You know, and I didn't get to see this team as much this season as uh, I'd like to. And I, was, I knew that Ruiz was a great player. I was very surprised at his, his both ways abilities to play offense, play defense, and his quick shots. Escalante right into the breadbasket of Vanzella. Dos Santos will let it run to his keeper. Cal Tibiano. Donatelli wants it. Still battling in the corner, Donatelli. Balls for Rayleigh, and the former Terrapin shot is kicked away by Reynoso. Rayleigh, good job to get back. Still work to do, and he's going to be whistled for the foul. Free kick with just under 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Solis de Sonora looking to take a lead into the first intermission. And almost everything from their own half is going to be a shot on goal and a strong hand from Vanzella to push it over his crossbar. I think that surprised. I know it surprised me with how quick it was in. I think it surprised Vanzella. I, didn't, he didn't, I thought he was going wide, and in the last minute it curled back in and he was able to get a touch on it. Rosales off the board, just beyond Tayu. And the rebound hammered into a mass of bodies. Gustavo Rosales wants to slow things down. Contreras, 14 seconds left. Is there time for one more Solis de Sonora attack? It might go the way of Baltimore. Donatelli into the corner. Another save by Reynoso. He will throw it downfield, looking for Tayu. Don't think he has time to get a shot off. As the first quarter ends, 1-1 between Solis de Sonora and the Baltimore Blast. 
in a very evenly played match, and the score reflects that through 15 minutes. It's, it's been a reflection of both teams' strengths. Baltimore has played great defense. Sonora has got some great, exciting shots. And right now, these teams are showing why they're the best two in the league right now and why they're the final two teams playing in this season. And it's one of those things that players on both sides have told us, you know, it's really going to be a game of mistakes, right? Because in this field, you have to think quickly, you have to make decisions quickly. And you saw even just the giveaway like the one that fell right to the feet of Donatelli, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he's in one-on-one -on -one against Reynoso, who did a good job to come out and cut down the angle, but it's those little mistakes that could very well be the difference when all is said and done tonight. Right, and it's not just the mistakes, it's who can capitalize on the mistakes. Like you just said, we had a mistake there by Sonora, but then they were able to recover. We've had mistakes in, on Baltimore's defensive side. In game one, they weren't able to recover, and it cost them a couple goals. Game two, we've already seen a couple uh, slow touches, maybe uh, ill-advised passes, but when they went the wrong way, they were able to get back and recover. And one of the coolest things about this Baltimore side is, and Danny Kelly said, you know, one of the reasons we have such a strong team is the players are always looking to improve it themselves. He had William Vanzella, who knew Jonatas Melo through futsal, and he bought in Jonatas Melo from the Italian Professional Futsal League, and three years on, Jonathan Melo, such an important player. And this year, he told head coach Danny Kelly about Daniel Peruzzi, who at the time was playing for Milano Calcio Futsal Club. And he got him video. And then Danny Kelly brings in Daniel Peruzzi, who's also having an excellent season for the Blast. And so everybody is looking to contribute to this Blast side. And, and that's just you know, one of the things that Danny Kelly has done so well over in Maryland. Well, Danny Kelly, I would imagine, watches two to four hours of video a day is what it seems like. In season, he's watching to scout his next opponents, to scout his team, see what they did wrong, what they can improve on. Off season, he's looking to improve his roster. Even last year, in the past several years, where he's been in this final game, even after a championship run, he's always looking to improve his team. And that's the way he was as a player. He was always looking to improve his game. And that's why he's a champion so many times out. Same goes for the Sonora side. They are constantly watching. They're out in the community working with each other, with other players, because they want to grow this game, not only uh, for the MASL, but grow this game, this brand of soccer in Mexico. Uh, and it's been great being here for these past couple of days and seeing how excited this community is for their solace. Uh, and, and I just, I can't wait to see you know, how this game grows in Mexico I, I, with maybe one or two teams in the future, in the very near future. A lot of rumblings about things in the pipelines for indoor soccer in Mexico, V. Very interesting to see what happens, but this Solis de Sonora side has certainly been the flagship outfit to start that kind of expansion here in Mexico. Oh, they've been an example, not just for teams in Mexico, but for teams throughout the uh, MASL. You know, they're, they're, we've got a team coming in Toronto. They can look to what Sonora's done here to really get in grassroots. Uh, I am in Kansas City. You know, the Comets can look to see what some of the things they're doing with their players, with the atmosphere here, improve on that game. In San Diego, where you guys are, I know that Phil's watching this game, and he's, he's picking pieces of what they do here. Uh, Baltimore's the same way. They've been around as an example for a very long time, and now Sonora has picked it up and picked up that mantle of an example franchise. Second quarter kicking off here at the Centro de Usos Multiplex in Hermosillo, Mexico. 1-1 between Solis de Sonora and the Baltimore Blast in game two of the Ron Newman Cup. The Solis de Sonora quickly on the attack. And that shot hammered over, but once again, you see the likes of Damian Garcia and Roberto Escalante out of the back working to create that half yard of space to get a shot off. And it's kind of been the difference here tonight. Over in Baltimore, it was Baltimore that had trouble hitting the target with those outside shots. And tonight it's Solis de Sonora that would like to get some of those efforts on frame. Right, and I'm not sure if it's the travel, the distance, the field dimensions, but for some reason their shots have been just wide tonight. Healy plays it along the boards. Tayu, strong hold up play from the Cameroonian. Back to Tayu. 
Good job by Cal Tibiano to double up on him. Garcia has a hit, pushed wide, and it's an own goal. So unlucky. Solis de Sonora have a two to one lead inside the first minute of the second quarter as Vanzella tried to push it to safety and instead it ricocheted off of Pat Healy and into the net. Look of frustration on the face of Santana. Oh, it's kind of like hockey. Just throw the puck in front of the net and good things can happen. You know, we talked about what a great defender Pat Healy is earlier. That's pretty much the only way you're going to score on him is a uh, mistake, ball, bad bounce, unlucky bounce. Uh, and now Solis has the lead. Kanyes gets it out wide. And the rebound well played by Vanzella. Calling for his front three to get forward. And elects to play it to the back line. Donatelli off the boards. Trying to spin, somehow escapes too. The shot hit Cal Tibiano. Reynoso fires it out wide for Segura. Poked away from him. And Segura is going to be whistled for the foul. It was interesting talking about the futsal background of many of these Baltimore Blast players. Junatas Melo said, you know, playing in a smaller arena, it feels more like futsal, so I don't mind it. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, a small arena like this, plays to the futsal strong players. It's tight spaces, not a lot of room, and you, you can move the ball around a little bit more, more like, like he said, on a futsal court. Lopez fires it off the glass and is flicked out wide by Donatelli. That'll be a kick in for Solis de Sonora. Just about two minutes gone here in the second quarter. As Solis de Sonora have the 2-1 lead courtesy of an own goal off the unfortunate Pat Healy. There's another good block coming in from the blast. Escalante. Still going Escalante. Uh, deflection off of Santana. Baltimore escape. Rosas able to turn. And he's wrestled to the ground by Donatelli. Good skill by Rosas, looked to be going one way and then all of a sudden spun the other. And some of the fans here were calling for a card here. This is playoff soccer. They're gonna call fouls, but you gotta draw blood to, to disrupt the game, especially with a veteran crew like we have today. Santana has space to run. Instead of Lex to flight it into the corner. Falls for Melo. Dantas checks in, Vanzella doesn't use him. Santana played it behind Dantas, and the break could be on here, it's Lopez. Well, they want a foul, but what it really was was too heavy of a touch from Lopez. And then a free kick as Escalante dumps Hoxie, and he's gonna get a yellow card for kicking the ball away in frustration. Not a smart move by Escalante. So no man advantage for the Baltimore Blast, but Escalante is going to have to sit for the next five minutes. They'll still have five players on the field, but losing him for five minutes is a disadvantage. He's such a big guy, a big force, and he, he fills those lanes that we've been talking about. He is one of the players that has driven the defensive push that they've had in the last series. Melo stands over it. Brazilian in his third season with the Baltimore Blast. Into the corner. Hoxie battling his way through and he's gonna get called for a foul. Emotion starting to heighten a bit. 
Oxy and Contreras are chirping at each other. Contreras quickly rolls it off to Reynoso. Plays it back to Contreras. And one back in the midfield. Scores free for Sonora. Cañas gets it across. Damian Garcia. 34-year-old looking for Tayo on the far side. Skips all the way through beyond Lopez. And the brace is on here. And that's going to be the first penalty of the game. And it comes against the most penalized man in the playoffs in Raimondo Contreras. Yeah, that's one where, you, where Rich Grady had to pull a card. He was in on goal if it wasn't for that play. Now, are they going to give a shootout here? No. You know, I don't think that Contreras had to do that because Reynoso was off his line and was going to be first to it. Right. Yeah, it looks like they're going to just give the, the restart. And you're right. There was a defender coming back, and Reynoso was coming out. So it wasn't a last man opportunity there. He really should have played the ball, pushed it in, not taken the foul there. Over for Dantas. Ruiz gets the block. And forward, Rosas. And holding on to it well is Gustavo Rosales. And smartly spins around and gets it back to his keeper. Have to be careful of this Solis de Sonora side, who led the league in shorthanded goals with seven. Yes, but this Baltimore power play is pretty powerful. They used it to the to their advantage and tied the game with 30 uh, within 30 seconds of the uh, power play in, in the uh, game one. Baltimore went one for two on Friday night. Tied the game at one with the power play goal, having trouble setting it up this time around though. The Solis de Sonora love to pressure high, even when they're a man down. Space is opening up here, though, and Reynoso did just enough. Donatelli gets it back to Healy, playing the point. Slipped into the corner. Back to Healy. Blast looking to break the house down here on this power play. It's a beautiful ball clipped in beyond Reynoso, and we're tied at two as Donatelli tips it in. Uh, there's a man you cannot lose at the back side because he will make you pay. That was great work by him to get in front of the pass, block it just out of Reynoso's reach, and then just follow through for the wide open net. He was wide open on that back corner. He must, that has to be a, a missed assignment there because there's no way you would leave Andrew Hoxie on a restart there, wide open in that back, back corner. Such tremendous vision here from Pat Healy to realize the Solis de Sonora mistake and then a deft touch from Tony Donatelli to push it beyond the advancing Reynoso before tapping it into an empty net. And we are tied at two in Hermosillo. Contreras. Baltimore Blast now five for eight on the power play in these playoffs. Scoring against the team that had the best penalty kill in the regular season in Solis de Sonora. Into the corner off the boards. Tayu's free at the back post. And King Tayu has his first goal of the championship series. And Solis de Sonora are back out in front three to two. Just like we've been saying, it's a game of mistakes, a game of momentum. Momentum hasn't had a chance to find its really foothold for either team. And right there, there was a game of mistakes. Ball passes through two defenders to where Frank Tayu is there on the back post. Oh, now if you look, Baltimore had the lane covered. They had him taken out of the play. But because they couldn't get their foot on the ball, he was able to jump in and slide in for that goal. Garcia off the boards. Tayu, ever the predator, was lurking at the back post. And he was able to plunder. So let's stay Sonora back out in front for the third time in this game. Dos Santos pushes it off the boards. And Pereira wins the free kick in midfield. And 
Pereira calling for the trainer. So he looks to be in some real discomfort here. Three to two with 9.41 well, left in the half. He got sandwiched and then it looked like he might have landed on the ball. Hopefully just the wind taken out of him there. It was a lovely turn and then just smashed into by Mauricio Salas. Masala standing over him to make sure that he's okay. Good sportsmanship from these Solis players as Tayu's over there as well. well now these two te teams are intense and they are out for blood to get each other tonight. But the thing we saw after game one, the thing we've seen this whole series is the respect and we see it right there. Well done, both, both teams. Oh, correction, it was Dantas who took the blow. I hope that Dantas is okay, struggling to just make his way to the bench. This play will resume with 9.41 left in the first half. Three to two, Solis de Sonora. And the way the scoring has been back and forth in bunches, kind of a case of anything you can do, I can do better. Not that time, as Santana fires it well over the goal. Rolled in for Salas. Rosas arrives on the scene. This one rolled back to Reynoso. Hoxie chasing. Reynoso, Baltimore applying high pressure. Solis, play out of it swiftly. Forward for Cañas. And a smart play from Rosas, getting it back to his keeper. As Solas de Sonora make changes. This is a menacing run. Played into the corner and Vanzell is out to call the danger. This one played behind Peruzzi. Kanye is fighting for it. Solas come away with possession. This is Gustavo Rosales, and the 35-year-old is gonna hold things up. Francisco Dorame, his first season with Solas de Sonora after transitioning from outdoor soccer where he played in the Liga de Ascenso, the second division in Mexico. Also spent some time in the Liga MX with Monarcas de Morea back in 2010-2011. It's Reynoso over the three quarters line, but puts it over the glass. <laughs> Junatas Melo had four goals in the championship series last year against Solas de Sonora. So far, one assist on Friday night. Cañas flicks it on into the path of Contreras, punched away by Venzella. Shot takes a deflection, and Venzella paws it away again. Garcia hits it, doesn't make its way through. I'll tell you another person I don't envy is the stats guy having to mark down all these blocks. Oh yeah, with the short field, everybody is compressed in that small area. So yeah, it would be a tough, tough thing to just determine whose foot that was when you've got six of them right there. Garcia. On a bad mistake, but Baltimore unable to punish Solis. Now Solis run through. And it was shanked wide by Contreras. Uh, it didn't be, look to be much in it from Damian Garcia there, but he's whistled for the foul. Melo is going to leave this one off for Dos Santos. The official moves Tayu back before blowing his whistle. And it's off for Venzella. Flicked on. The Reynoso had to be alert. Tayu. Strong hold of play, and Cal Tibiano will be whistled for the foul. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly seven minutes left in the second quarter. And Solis de Sonora with a slender three to two lead. Frank Tayu putting the home side back in front with a tap in at the back post. As this one skied just over by Damian Garcia. As we've hit the media timeout, 6.54 left. And have you seen any changes in the style of play for either side in between from the first quarter to the second quarter? You know, I think Baltimore's came out uh, in the second quarter with a little bit more confidence, knowing that they could play and they could hold up uh, with Sonora on the offensive end in this building. Since that first opening five minutes or so, the game has settled down both sides. Each side trying to find their opportunity. With Sonora, they're just gonna shoot, shoot, and shoot. They're gonna hope for rebounds, place people in the center at the top of the arc, looking for those rebounds and the wide open shots. Baltimore's done a great job to let that ball come in, come off the wall, and be in place for that rebound. Offensively, they're starting to work the ball a little bit more and play more to their game plan, rather than just shoot it, shoot it, shoot it like Sonora does. But look for their chances. Take a look at that free kick from Damian Garcia. He will hit those right on goal 90% of the time. It's incredible, he'll shoot from anywhere. Uh, so in any other building, any other team, a shots restarts where you, you see them, they're gonna go back to the keeper. They're gonna go square to your other defender. Not a chance, he's going over that wall and, and right hand frame. Both teams making their way back out onto the floor at the Centro de Usos Multiplace. Incredible atmosphere here, worthy of a Ron Newman Cup championship final. So let's this Sonora with the 1-0 lead in games and the 3-2 lead here in the second quarter. As Healy gets it back underway. Vanzella rolls it into the corner. Good to see Vinny Dantas back out. And off of Dantas last in the referee's point of view. And this time it's a Solis de Sonora player who's down. So stoppage in plays, the training staff is gonna come out. I believe that it's Enrique Cañas who's down. And what a season Cañas has had finished the regular season sixth in goals and ninth in points in the MASL and the 25 year old you know what one of the great stories like many of these Sonora players he was picked out of the local leagues here in Hermosillo to play for this professional side which in their second year of existence has already scored over 400 goals and is back in the championship game yeah I, I can tell you you know I, I play in an old, old man's league back home in Kansas City I couldn't hold a candle to anything that these players do down here. You could go and feel the team from six guys you find out on the street that can compete. The level of talent and excitement for this game, arena game, is amazing here. And we are I'm seeing you, this atmosphere. They're talking right now, the teams are talking in their bench. I don't know if they can hear the strategy. I'm standing right next to you. I can't hear you. Well, the blue clappers are out in full force. The Coombe, one of my favorite places to come to. I mean, these fans and the acoustics in this building, it's just like the noise is just reverberating around the stadium. It's incredible atmosphere. One I'd seen from uh, being uh, watching it on MASL TV, and even then it looked like a great place to watch a game, but it watching on MASL TV doesn't hold a candle to being here live. Uh, it's a great place for, to be. As a, as a player, even as a visiting player, I'd be pumped about playing in this place and playing in front of these fans and just seeing what you can do for these fans that, as a visiting player to, to make them boo you, as a, as a home player to become their heroes. And Andrew Hoxie said yesterday, you know, I didn't watch film just of game one. I also re-watched last year's championship game two just so I remember what it's like on this field and what to expect from this crowd. It's definitely a, a different place. One of the one of the better places I've uh, watched a game in this league. Ruiz 
Rosas. Garcia. Clips it into the corner. Rosas. Referee plays defense for the visitors. Trying to spring a counterattack Baltimore, but that one's quickly closed down. Off the boards for Tayu. Frank Tayu looking to turn quickly doubled. Good job by Cal Tibiano and Nelson Santana to quickly close down Frank Tayu. A good thing for the Baltimore Blast. I see Vinny Dantas is back on the field now. Tayu! Tayu might get another opportunity here. Was unable to get proper contact on it. So we're gonna have a goalie restart. Uh, if one of these bicycle kicks goes in like that, this place is going to explode. Hoxie off the boards, and it's swept in by Judah Tasmelo. We're tied at three. What a goal. He, I don't know where he came from. He just slipped right in there. And a great placed shot right to the near corner. What a vision from Hoxie. Got the angle right off the board. Melo flying into the channel, and he caught Reynoso sleeping at his near post. Game on once again. Reynoso going toward the far, and Melo said, I'm going to take the space at the near. And great vision is right by Hoxie, because he was hanging out way back in the middle of the yellow line and came all the way across just to get on that ball. And that shot couldn't have been placed any better. Right to the near cor corner on the ground, but there's no way Reynoso can get down on it in time to make the save. For the third time in this game, Baltimore has come back to level the affair. We're tied at three, heading into the final five minutes of the first half. Baltimore looking to take the lead for the first time. And once again, it's a player with reckless abandon throwing their body at the ball for Solis de Sonora. This time, it's Victor Baez. You know, Mark, I said that I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a game three tonight. But are we going to see an overtime before that, the way that these two teams have gone back and forth tonight? Peruzzi flashes it just wide. Oh, and a giveaway could be on here. And it's going to be the first penalty against Baltimore in this series. And Dos Santos can't believe it. Was that a penalty, Jeff? It looked like it to me. If we could see a replay on it. It, it was a penalty, I would say, for sure. A blue card is, is something that, you know, it, I'm not a referee and we talked about how that's the toughest job out there. He felt it was enough uh, there to, to call the blue card on it, but it was for sure a penalty. Solis de Sonora, two for four on the power play in the playoffs. Finished the season ranked 11 in the MASL with a man advantage. He's inside and the shot blocked. Nice move from Garcia into the middle. And a great job to stand up Frank Tayu by Tony Donatelli. This is just the third penalty given up by the Baltimore Blast through eight games in these playoffs. They don't make mistakes very often. And they keep their heads cool and calm. Danny Kelly ball. So that stat does not surprise me at all. Well, Sonora has created a few opportunities in the early goings of this penalty to Adriano Dos Santos. And they have a corner kick here. Played off to the back post looking for Tayu and cleared away. Vanzella. It's it out wide. Pereira on the charge. The 25 year old is bought down. Free kick for I the think Blast. Pereira. I think at first Pereira wanted Vanzella to make that run after that he cleared that ball off the wall. He hesitated for a minute before he ran onto it. 
Pat Healy pushing everyone forward, but is this one where he's gonna turn and play it back to his keeper just to kill some time on this man advantage? And a five second has been called. So Healy not even able to get it off. And that, that one might go to the crowd. Rich Grady was counting and, and Healy was still trying to direct traffic and trying to push the wall back. I don't know if he knew that uh, Grady was already counting off the uh, five seconds. And that was one where I thought he would just play it back to Vanzella. And now Tayu's knocked off the ball and he wins a free kick. One minute and six seconds left on the penalty to Adriano Dos Santos. Solis looking to regain the lead here at the Coombe. Free kick just inside the arc for the home side. Vanzella all the way out to challenge it. Skips through him into the net. And Solis have the lead once again. And Vanzella comes out, and he, he's done this throughout the season and throughout his career. Basically joins the wall there, hoping to give no chance for that ball to get past him. Here, it squirts through the wall. As a goalkeeper, you might be able to get on that. But nothing Pat Healy could do as it bounced over his head into the goal. Mauricio Salas with his 16th goal in a Solas de Sonora jersey makes it 4-3. And it's a power play goal for the home side. Mark, is that our fourth lead change of this game? Fourth lead change, and every time it's been Solis who's taken the lead, but Baltimore has responded every single time. Will it be the same? I think this one's gonna be three lines. We'll come back to the top of the arc. Can Solis get their first two goal advantage of this game? This top of the yellow line it goes. Victor Vaz is standing over it. Has Rosas to his left. Tayu comes up and a timeout taken by Victor Baez. So Head coach Jaime Luis Borrego wants to talk this one over, see if he can draw up a plan that will give Solis their first two goal advantage. You know, on some, a play like that, he gives his players the freedom to walk up, see what the defense is giving you. And right there, you can see he had two different ideas in mind. Both of them Baltimore had covered. So they take their time, take a timeout. You're up four to three, try to build on that lead, which no, neither team has been able to do uh, so far today. For Baltimore, just sit back, relax. Baltimore Blast Soccer. This game's gonna come back. They just need to hold on, not get out of their element, and keep their emotions in check. Donatelli in conversation with Andrew Hoxie and Dos Santos. Vanzella and Healy, the two leaders of this team, calling the rest of their unit back out onto the field. Great support for Roberto Escalante. 29-year-old finished this season as an All-MASL Honorable Mention selection. And now it's Rosas who's over it. This time it's Baez who's to his left that it's played into the corner, and that was not in the script for Jaime Luis Borrego. He might uh, be regretting that one and might want that one back at the end of the day. So missed opportunity as Vanzella gets it from Healy. Played forward, Tayu turns, and Vanzella's there. Lopez battling for it in the corner with Dos Santos, who wins. Escalante spins back with it. A 
Looped into the air by Reynoso. And the free kick is gonna go against Daniel Lopez. That's one of those where Daniel Lopez is five, six, five, seven. He's going up against Tony Donatelli, who is a lot taller than that. So you gotta make yourself taller on those head balls somehow. That time the uh, referees and everybody else saw the handball try to extend his height. Healy gets it forward. Played to the back post. Nobody on the doorstep for the Baltimore Blast. Otherwise, it would have been 4-4. Reynoso knows the marking needs to be tighter. Inside the final three minutes of the first half. And an excellent game so far between Solas de Sonora and Baltimore Blast, who have the advantage tonight and in games 1-0. The Solis de Sonora bench going ballistic after that foul is called against them. Luis Jaime Borrego can't believe it, parading the officials. Driven into the far corner, but over the glass. Unlucky there. So kicking for Solis de Sonora. A correction. It went inside that corner line, so it's going to be a goalie restart for Diego Reynoso. Reynoso elects to keep it himself. Gets it back. Beautiful touch over the defender. Clipped in, just missing the header was Alejandro Leva. It's been used sparingly so far tonight, Alejandro Leva. Melo heads it back in, and a big save by Reynoso. Leva battling with Healy, and he sends this one out of bounds. Alejandro Leva announced his presence in the league last season. After the 7-5 loss against San Diego, the two teams met here a week later in Solis' first ever home game, and he scored five goals in that match. And from then on, was one of the most important forwards for this team. He said that he came into this league out of nowhere last season, and he didn't want to be just a flash in the pan. He wanted to build on that and, and make a legacy for himself, and he's really shown that so far this season. Melo intercepts. Gets a touch off from Andrew Hoxie. And this is Leva going the other way. Tries to slide it through. And Santana comes away from the scrum with it. Trips himself up Santana. The crowd enjoyed that. Pereira seizes the loose ball. Hoxie battling with Garcia. And Hoxie's gonna be called for the foul as he barrels into Francisco Dorame. Well, Nelson Santana has discovered that they do have the uh, turf turtles here in Mexico as well. He was, uh, he was making a run for it when that thing grabbed him and knocked him down. Well, there's some great music playing here, and you know what they say, the rhythm is going to get you. <laughs> Free kick for Solis de Sonora, just over a minute and a half left in the second quarter. An opportunity here. Sprays wide, cleared away at the back post. Ruiz's shot is blocked. Garcia first to the loose ball. Hoxie battling, and Hoxie called for another foul. They're starting to rack up on the number four. Blast fans will be happy to know that Hoxie has called time on his outdoor career so that he can focus solely on the Baltimore Blast. Hoxie's such a great player. I cannot get over his mustache, though. Uh, I go from being jealous to being in awe. And then he comes out with his great, uh, with a great shot. A great play on the field as well. Bodies starting to fly. And Solis de Sonora will get a free kick. Inside the final minute of the first half. 
Will Baltimore find the equalizer or will Solis de Sonora sledge the slimmest of advantages before the teams go into the locker room at the break? And driven in. A scot into the air. A nice piece of improvisation from Alejandro Leva, but he can't get his effort down. And it will be a goalie restart for William Vanzella. <laughs> The 32-year-old and both these goalkeepers really continuing the tradition of just incredible goalkeepers in the indoor game, going back to the likes of Victor Noguera and those who played in the late 80s, early 90s. Well, both of them spent this regular season within the top five statistically in many categories, and they've been consistent throughout the playoff run, and that's the key in this league, consistency making sure that your defense knows where you're gonna be and when you're gonna be there. Oh, Sole is so comfortable in possession, even in front of their own goal. It's Gustavo Rosales finds Roberto Escalante. Floats it into the corner. Lucas Roque dispossessed. One back by Soles. And all the way back to Reynoso. Final 10 seconds. In for Leva off the boards. Seven seconds, six, five, and the clock will stop with 3.4 seconds left. One last opportunity before the break for Solas de Sonora to extend their lead. It's gonna be Salas. Brazilian fires, and it hits off of Healy. Fans wanted a handball. Healy goes down, and the first half is gonna come to an end. That was quite a shot. Healy took the full effect of that blast I mean, from Mauricio Salas. And that one knocked the, air, the wind out of me. Well, certainly not a handball. I think the referee's got that one right. Oh, Pat Healy is showing not only why he's the heart and soul of Baltimore, but why up until this season, he was the two-time reigning MASL Defender of the Year. Yeah, he's not afraid to stand in front of those shots. He'll pay the price sometimes like he just did, but he will do that. He will stand there every time. So at halftime, it's Solis de Sonora four, the Baltimore Blast three. Thoughts on the first half, Jeff Houston? Well, this is, that's not all the scoring we're gonna have today. You're gonna come out, we're gonna see the second half, a lot more of what we saw in the first. Sonora's gonna shoot from everywhere. Baltimore's gonna try to get in lanes. They're gonna come out and try to control possession. They've seen that they can do it in the first half, especially on this field. So they're gonna work to find uh, their shots, their passes, and while Sonora is just gonna shoot, and they've got the marksmen to do it from anywhere on the field. At the break, it's Solas de Sonora four, the Baltimore Blast three. We're gonna step aside, but we'll be back with you for the second half here on MASL TV.
just under two minutes before the second half starts, and we're honored to be joined by MASL Commissioner Josh Schwab. And Josh, I think from a league perspective, you couldn't have asked for a better first half. Boy, if, if you are not here and not in love with this, you don't have a pulse, for real. And I'd say if you're a fan of sport, whether it be chess, checkers, whatever you do, and you're here, you love this atmosphere. It's probably one of the top atmospheres I've ever been in in sport. I said it last year during this game. Um, this is just outstanding for the league and outstanding for both teams, really. And we talked about a lot going on with expansion and other things in the works. And one of the things that really struck me was the Toronto group that was just announced said it was because of this game last year that they decided to go ahead with their plans for an MASL team north of the border. Yeah, and this, this game, this atmosphere here in Sonora is infectious, and I've talked a lot about what Sonora has done to open markets up for us in Mexico and apparently up in Canada too, because once you're here in this atmosphere, this is what our great sport can really be. And I love to the contrast again in styles that we see here in Mexico and Sonora. We see on the East Coast in Baltimore as we saw on Friday night. We see in San Diego and now we'll see in Toronto as well. Just, it's great for our sport to be a true in international game. And we've talked about this atmosphere here tonight, but we really have to give a ton of credit to Baltimore for the wonderful event they put on on Friday. Yeah, great event on short notice too. Great crowd, um, bad weather leading up to it. Obviously we experienced that with travel this week and then having a game that night in town, a baseball game. Great job by their front office, put together a great match. And then we ended up with an outcome where the game was in doubt almost the whole time. So great start so far to this game as well. And once again, another game where the outcome is very much in doubt as we go into the second half. What are your thoughts so far on what you saw in the first half? So it's interesting. First quarter, um, myself and some other executives from the league, some other league owners are down on the boards on the field level. The intensity of this game, I've never seen anything like this. Even in last year's championship game compared to this, and the speed of the game in the first quarter was unreal. Um, as we moved into the second quarter, I thought the game slowed down a little bit. I know there's some players with some foul trouble. So um, I look forward to this next half some strategy changes by both teams probably it's going to be interesting but the intensity and hopefully the game will stick close from a league perspective and you know so much talk about expansion a lot of stuff in the pipeline a lot of announcements are going to come out what can you tell us at this moment about what's going on in the front office i can tell you more announcements are about to come out <laughs> that's what i can tell you so um, we do have more announcements of expansion as i stated in a previous press conference or interview I'm dotting all the I's, crossing the T's, making sure all the legal documents are correct, that the teams are going to be financially solvent, that they're going to be here for a long time. So that's what we're working on, but there will be more announcements. We're getting set for the second half in Hermosillo. Four to three, Solas de Sonora have the lead over the Baltimore Blast. Another tight one here, just as it was last year in the championship between these two teams. Of course, the one difference, and what a big difference it is, is that this time around, it's Solis de Sonora with the one games to none lead. Yeah, and I thought too, that had a big play in how the crowd reacted to this game starting too. I knew when Sonora sco scored their first goal, the roof was gonna blow off this place, and it almost did. Um, it, it's gonna be an interesting finish, that's all I could say, but um, anything can happen, especially with how this field's set up. Uh, so we'll see. Well, Baltimore has done such an excellent job. They're able to get forward and create chances, but also defensively, they haven't let the Sonora side take a lot of shots from distance, which is something they love to do in this building. Yeah, and I think um, I talked to uh, Sole's GM, Luis Paz, and he talked about how disciplined Baltimore is. And then on the other flip side of that, how aggressive Sonora is makes the game so exciting back and forth. So such a contrast in styles I think makes it great. And we talk about the fact that Baltimore throughout the regular season was the MASL's meanest defense, giving up just 69 goals. But lost in that is how potent their offense is. Yeah, no, and obviously you're seeing that tonight. I mean, I was, I hate to say it, but I, I love the tactics on both teams coming out. I thought it was matched up well between both coaches and how they played off each other and what they wanted to do. There was a clear strategy for both, and it played out that first half. Second half about to get underway. The Baltimore Blast will be attacking to the left of whatever device you are watching on. Such a pleasure to have you with us on thank MASL TV for game two. Josh Schwab, thank you so much for joining us here at halftime. 
any words as the second half is about to kick off. Yeah, for you, for yourself and the fans out there watching, really enjoy this. This is the best that we have to offer right now. Two great teams battling it out, sold out crowd. There is not a seat empty in here, and it is so loud. I'm on the field level. You can barely hear anything. It's, it's absolutely nuts. So for those fans out there, enjoy it. Mark, enjoy yourself broadcasting this game. Congrats for being chosen for this, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. One last question for you. Where can we find you? in order to follow you and find out more about what's brewing in the MASL. Yeah, so probably Twitter is best, uh, Shab Law, at Shab Law, S-C-H-A-U-B Law. I know you've been tweeting at me quite a bit. I get um, direct messages from a lot of fans on there. That's probably the best way to follow myself and news of the MASL. Josh, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the second half. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Well, already friction, and once again, it's Raimundo Contreras who's right at the heart of it. This time, chirping with Pereira. No love loss between these two teams. A lot of respect, but no love loss. That's the truth right there. They know what they can do on the field. That doesn't mean they have to like it all the time. This time, Solis having trouble getting out of pressure. They do get it to Contreras. Skips by Pereira and then claps in his face. Oh, now the two of them really getting into it. We talked about Danny Kelly and what he preaches. One of the things he said, especially in this atmosphere, the emotion of what this moment really brings is the blue card's gonna come out. Oh, it perfectly illustrates what I was about to say. He said, you cannot lose your head. You have to keep calm and you have to keep discipline, and they're a bad foul by Vinny Dantas, and he's gonna sit for two minutes. And that's that's a case of where Rich Grady, this game, this second half started out, emotions flying, bodies flying, he's gotta pull it back. It was not a smart foul by Vinny Dantas, he was beat, let the guy go, track back and defend. Instead he sticks that leg out and bowls the guy over. So another power play for Solas de Sonora, As Reynoso, who will start it off. Already taking advantage of one, Solis de Sonora. Looking for their first two goal advantage of the game. 45 seconds gone in quarter number three, and Solis de Sonora are on the power play. We do need to point out that Baltimore Blast is the only team to score a shorty in the playoff season. Segura had Ruiz, good tackle from Melo. Slid into the corner. And finding the far corner is Solas de Sonora. Another power play goal. It's Damian Garcia with that venomous left foot. And it is five to three. Right there, Sonora takes advantage of the open space that a power play provides. As we see a replay here in just a moment, I'm sure. Garcia is able to sneak back behind the play on the far post. And as we've seen and talked about, he's not afraid to shoot from anywhere. Takes a near impossible angle and puts it up in the very top of the goal. An emphatic finish, and Solis have their first two-goal lead of the game. An opportunity on here. And cleared away before Tayu could pounce at the back post. Well, just like game one, it was Hiram Ruiz taking out the entire Baltimore defense with one pass. And going the other way. And a foul in the corner, this time on Tayu against Dos Santos. Dos Santos in his seventh season with the Baltimore Blast. And you talk about the great job that Ed Hale and Danny Kelly have done with the continuity of this club. Well, and they always look for players that can make an impact and make an impact right away. As you see, one of those players nearly stepped in and 
got the uh, blast back within a goal. Back post, Tayu can't force it home. Melo, Lopez policing him. Venzela. The space is opened up here for Gustavo Rosales. That was a lovely little flick to the back post. That was cleared out for a corner kick. Good defending by Rayleigh. So Gustavo Rosales will come over. Lays it back, and Venzella pushes it to safety. Baez. Reynoso with two closing in on him. Donatelli wins it in midfield for Baltimore. Hoxie unable to find a way through. Baez running right at the heart of the Baltimore defense. Baez once again, and instead it's taken out wide and won back by the blast. Donatelli on the turnover. Donatelli able to get it towards Pereira, cleared away. Rayleigh gets it across. This is Rayleigh again. One back, it's a 2 on 0 for Solis, and they take full advantage. And in the blink of an eye, it's 6-3 as Solis doubles their lead. There's a man you cannot let have open space, especially that close to the goal. He is going to find the position, the only spot where the goalkeeper is not going to be able to get to. Hiram Ruiz is having himself a series. Second straight game with a goal and an assist, as this time he gets his name up in lights. And we saw on the replay, he had about a three or four step lead from his defender right in the middle of the field. William Benzella was just left out to dry. There's nothing you can do on that. And now if you're Baltimore, you gotta still keep remaining calm and play Baltimore by soccer, but now you've gotta start pushing the envelope just a little bit more. Maybe taking that extra pass forward instead of looking back and developing the play from the backside. Maybe taking an extra shot wide when, when you would normally look for a pass inside. And maybe it is taking a, putting the ball into the corner like we just saw right there. Salas breaks the double team. Works his way to the corner, slips it by Vanzella, but it skips all the way through. And Contreras will get it back to his keeper. Both sides keeping the same personnel on the field. Salas, Reynoso, into the middle for Contreras. It's a three on two. Contreras went for the reverse ball, and it was well read. Cañas. Salas, and that was a bit of an ambitious effort from Damian Garcia, and he knows it. Apologizes as he sprints over to the bench, and both teams make changes. Now, going back to where that play started to develop, it looked like it was going to be a, an odd man rush for Sonora. What Baltimore does so well is they not only crash back, get five guys behind the ball, but they crash to the ball. So all of a sudden, you had a guy from Sonora coming straight down the middle, Three guys crashed in on him, and he had nowhere to go. Dos Santos. Donatelli. Dos Santos skews the rebound wide. Great save from Reynoso. Dos Santos is going to want that shot back. You're not going to get a wide open look like that very often. Tayu. Baez. 26 year old lays it off for Lopez. Back to Baez. Solis. 
pivotal touch on for Tayu. And Venzella was equal to the task. Into the corner for the number fours to battle. And Hoxie almost got on the end of it. Reynoso came out to smother. That was a strong header away. Called Tibiano off the boards, just beyond Hoxie. What a touch from Lopez. Tayu, and a tremendous reaction save from Benzella. He hasn't got as many looks as he normally would in a game in this series, but he has taken advantage of the few times he has had a shot on goal. Another audacious effort off the volley. That ball's in Arizona. Pick that one up on my way home tomorrow. It'll be a goalie restart for Vanzella. Just over five minutes played in the third quarter. As Sonora came flying out of the starting gates in the second half. Vanzella has to apply gloves once again. For Sonora, it's a point of pride. They enjoy being the team that scores the most goals. They enjoy defending this house like they do. Riley zipped that one right into the hands of Diego Reynoso. Oh, it's a bad giveaway. And Reynoso's there again. Tayu working one-on-one. -on -one. Waits for the cavalry to arrive. Bulldozing his way through, no foul given. And Vanzella clears it out. And he was just over that line. Otherwise, it would have come back for a defensive clearance. Contreras gets it back in play. Contreras peels away from Lucas Roque. Tayu, and Healy's called for the hold. Healy's <laughs> saying Tayu dive. Tayu's having none of it. The thing on that, when you get there right there on the wall, somebody's gonna fall down, and usually if the guy who does is gonna be uh, given the foul. One back by Pereira, and the whistle's blown. Frustration for Pereira. Blast bringing players in from all corners of the globe. They signed Pereira three seasons ago from the Artemis Youth Academy in Greece. There's no limits to where Danny Kelly, to where Danny Kelly will go for looking for talent. He wants the best players, the players that will come to Baltimore and, and fight for a championship right away. Nervous moments here as Hiram Ruiz is down. Just gave the thumbs up though. I think trainers are calling for the magic spray, which usually does the trick. Especially for the knocks that you take on such a small field with such a fast paced game. Well, they, they play fast. It's a small surface. So there's gonna be a lot of banging of bodies. So you'll get some Charlie horses here. You'll get some bruises. So yeah. Gotta, gotta get those out. What's interesting though is I wanna watch the trainer when he comes off, if he's gonna take some of that magic spray for himself. Came rushing out to help Ruiz. Kinda took a, took a spill as he was coming out. Hey, I love the commitment to get to his player. That's how I'm gonna spin that one. <laughs> so six to three, Solis de Sonora, as we head toward the midway point of the third quarter. Reynoso floats it into the corner for Salas, takes it off the glass. Salas plays it up to himself, was looking for the angled ball off the boards for Tayu. 
Vinny Dantes measures it for Donatelli, who wins the free kick for the Baltimore Blast. When you're a defender and you're digging down there in the corner, it's not an uncommon to grab a jersey, to grab a hold of the elbow, try to keep your, your player on you and off of the ball. The key there, he did it right in front of Grady and locked his elbows and couldn't get away. That's an easy call for Grady to make. Rosales gets the block and the ball comes all the way back to Vanzella. Two chasing him. Nelson Santana was looking to blast it to the far post. Santana! That would have been the goal of the season. And that is an emphatic response from the Baltimore Blast to close the gap to six to four. Perfectly struck. And Reynoso still frozen in the exact same position as he took to face that shot. I mean, that was just a heck of a shot from a heck of a player there in Dantas. That's a player who comes into this game and will give everything he can in order to bring home a win for his team. He fights for that ball and he will take a shot. And a team seems to come through at just the right moment. Vinny Dantas with his seventh goal of the playoffs. Out in front as the points leader in the postseason has given Baltimore new life here in the third quarter as the gap is cut to six to four. That looked like a laser that was gonna slice right through the net. There was no chance anybody was getting on that one. Melo is able to play it out of trouble. I'll tell you, just from a soccer tactics perspective, one of my favorite things about this game has been watching both of these teams break the pressure. They can, they can handle it, can't they? And they look for open spots. They work for space off the ball. They're constantly moving. And whether you've got three guys coming on you, they know that that means there's a guy open somewhere. And that guy that's open is looking for the spot, looking for the lane to get open. So we've hit One thing that, that Dante's goal has done is it has quieted this crowd. When they got up by one, when they got up by two goals, when Sonora did, this place was intense. And I'm standing right here, I'm basically sticking my ear next to your microphone just so I can hear what you're saying. Right now, we're having a normal conversation because the crowd is just a little bit deflated. They know a 6-4 score is not a given here in the second half. We've hit the third quarter timeout midway through Period number three, and it is Solas de Sonora six, the Baltimore Blast four. And here's another look at that goal. And it starts with this tremendous effort from Nelson Santana. I mean, Santana nearly put it in just before that. I think that hit just on the outside of the frame. He puts it two degree or two feet to the right. That's the uh, goal of the playoffs right there. Yeah, but two feet to the left, and he'd miss completely. Sorry, that's a little bit of Mighty Ducks for you. <laughs> well, Nelson Santana showing that he's still got a lot of spring to those 38-year-old steps. As Contreras will be whistled for the foul as Healy ran into him. Thirty-one-year-old pounds it in. Healy bought down again, and his leg looked to buckle under that challenge from Alejandro Leva, and the referee calling for the trainers right away. And I hope that Healy is okay. Well, the good news is that Healy gets up quickly. And Healy hobbling off, but he looks to be all right. So that was a scary moment. Healy coming out of retirement in December for his eighth season with the Baltimore Blast. And what an important part to this team that he is. Danny Kelly said that he has such a high soccer IQ. His ability to read and anticipate situations makes the whole team better. Well, and he, he loves the game so much. He felt in the offseason that it was time to walk away, time to start looking at his life after soccer. Big save from Vanzella. 
But I, when, when the season started and Baltimore started a little bit slow, oh, as we look to see at Vanzella. And Vanzella down after he came out to cut off the angle. And it looks like he might have taken that shot right to the face. Well, if you needed any reassurance as to the commitment or what this means to these players, just look at this from Vanzella. I'm not sure what happened because it looked like he beat that away with his fist. But you hope that he's okay and these pictures looking promising for Baltimore fans as Vanzella getting up to his feet. That was yet another tremendous save from Baltimore shot stopper. Well, to be a great goalkeeper, you've got to be a little bit crazy. And he came out with no fear to come out after that shot. And although he paid the price, he's back up and he's ready to do it again if need be. Uh, it does look like part of that shot might have caught him. Baltimore training staff still checking on him. Alejandro Leva and some of the other Solis de Sonor players were upset that it's not going to be a contested ball. And Dos Santos just looked at him like, come on, look at what part of the field this ball's on. Seven minutes, 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Six to four, Solas de Sonora lead. Mark Serber alongside Jeff Husted. Hope you're enjoying our coverage on MASL TV of game two of the Ron Newman Cup Championship Series between these two vaunted sides. One side with an illustrious career and illustrious history in this indoor game and another side who's come in and completely shaken things up. It's just two premier franchises battling, and, it, and it's such a great battle. As an outside observer, this is what you want to see in an arena soccer game. You've got strength versus strength. You've got passion versus passion, and great players versus great players. And right now, we've got ourselves a great game. Helped on by Donatelli, but too far for Lucas Roque. Roque. Another player who came back to the Baltimore blast fold a bit late as he gets it inside for Dos Santos who continued his run. Roque took some time off at the beginning of the season for the birth of his daughter. So congratulations to Lucas Roque and his family. He also missed some time due to injury and there was some question on whether or not he'd be able to play this series at all. It's good to see him out there running around. Segura wanted to pull the trigger and realized he didn't have any room. On oh, out of bounds. It's a fast paced game, whether you're on the field or holding a drink on the sideline. Now, I'm not sure if the camera caught it, but there was a fan standing just at the boards and knocked the drink right out of her hand. She looks to be okay, though that's good. Segura in the corner. Dantes. His path to goal was quickly closed down. Pereira. Pereira muscles his way through. Baez matching him step for step and brings him down. And that's going to be a blue card for Victor Baez. Determined run by Pereira. And it will give Baltimore the man advantage. Got to always be careful when you got players flying to the board, especially when they're going in head first like that. And as a referee, you have to do whatever you can to discourage anything from happening. This will be the man advantage for the Baltimore Blast, looking to cut the deficit to one. Dantes, Donatelli, Dos Santos, Hoxie, and Healy 
the power play unit for the Baltimore Blast. Now that's gonna be another foul. And Hoxie grabbing that left ankle as he was twisted around by Damian Garcia. And Donatelli's having a conversation with Uzi Tayu, who's standing just on the other side of the boards. Of course, they were teammates last year. Maybe they're just sharing fond memories of, of times before. So the foul against Garcia, free kick for the Baltimore Blast. Tony Donatelli's over it. Far side, Dantas. Healy. Hoxie's got a bit of space and caught the near glass. That's a strong run from Gustavo Rosales. Rosales brought down, play goes on. Dantas gets it off to Donatelli. What's interesting there is that Sonora did not start out this power play on the plane like they were on a penalty kill. They came out looking to score a goal. And this one lays up perfectly for Donatelli who pushes it in and Baltimore back within one. Reynoso confounded. And a yellow card given to a member of the Solas de Sonora coaching staff who just ran onto the field and screamed at the referee. So it's gonna be a yellow card to the bench. That's been a point of emphasis for them all year. Now, as you see on that goal, Donatelli just wide open. That ball bounced right off the boards, straight across. Oh, it's the brilliance I of mean, Vinny Dantas right I, there, perfectly. I, his off great the run in there. Into the path of Donatelli. Great run in there by Donatelli, and an easy tap in to get them back within one. So it's game on once again in Hermosillo. Just over five minutes left in the third corner. And this Baltimore side can never be counted out. Now, they will battle, and they've been here before. When they played again the Milwaukee series, they went down by quite a bit in the game two. They actually fought back and made it a game for quite a while. And then when they went into the game three, they were behind again at one point, and they came back and found a way to win this. So they, they know how to play from behind. And even though it was a three goal deficit, you could see they weren't phased. That's uh, another power play goal against the MASL's best penalty killing unit. Now that's gonna be a foul and the question is, is there a card to follow? Uh, it's just gonna be a free kick. He ran down, Rich Gray ran down there with his hand in his pocket. I thought he was gonna pull it, but he kept it in his pocket and talked to the players instead. Vaz stands over it, has Salas directly behind him. Tayu's lurking at the far post. Tayu comes in the center, instead it's clipped over. And Tayu with the tap in. Tremendous redirect from Frank Tayu who gets his brace. Two goals for Tayu and a two goal lead restored for Solas de Sonora. Great effort from Tayu to stand in there among three different defenders and get the deflection goal as we see a replay here in just a moment. He fought his way into the middle there between three different players. And by the time he got in there, there was just one player on him and all he had to do was just put an easy toe on it and put it in the net. Lucy Tayu looking on, his brother has given Solis de Sonora a two goal lead. Baltimore looking for another response. Throw it forward for Salas. Pushed into the corner for Roque. 29 year old Brazilian spins out. Roque still battling and one whistle had gone while the referee on top of the play called for advantage. Well, you can hear what the crowd thinks of that. 
they saw Tayu off and running. I, you know, and I heard a whistle as soon as uh, he went down. I couldn't tell if that was from the crowd, but I guess uh, sounds like it might have been Rich Grady. And then once the whistle blows, you got to stop the play. That one hammered off the crossbar by Reynoso. Roque trying to catch him out, and he nearly did. Cal Tibiano into the danger area, but there were no Baltimore Blast attackers on the scene. That was a good battle from Josh Hughes. So great to see Hughes back out there as he's finally able to get on the field after suffering a concussion against St. Louis. It opens up here for Dante, saved on the line. Dante again, and pushed away by Diego Reynoso. What, a, what an exciting moment. We got some back and forth play here. There's no quit in Baltimore. At the same time, Sonora wants to put this one away. Pereira miss hit that one. Dantes brings it down. Contreras. Reynoso clears over the head of Tayu. Lopez looking to track it down in the corner. Instead, it's cleared away by the blast. Lovely skill from Reynoso to get that clear. And Dantas will be whistled for the foul. Quickly played by Sonora. Off the boards, Lopez. Segura was looking for the reverse ball to Frank Dayu, and instead it's gonna go all the way back as Baltimore were able to snuff out the danger. Silky smooth from Lopez. Still going Lopez, and a shot is blocked by Healy. And a three-line clearance. So back to the top of the defensive line it goes. Another opportunity for the home side via the dead ball. Three-man wall for William Venzella. It's gonna be Garcia. Well, Vanzella saw it late, but still able to make the save. Great save by Vanzella. Not only did he make the save, but when he blocked it, he blocked it away from the running player and where his, the only person who could get on it was his own blast defender. Tayu whistled for the foul. Seven to five inside the final three minutes of quarter number three. Healy needs a moment. Game two of the MASL championship in Sonora. And so far, it's had everything that the neutral could want. A defensive clearance. This one's going to come back to the top of the arc. Ruiz very frustrated as he's just saying he got a foot on it. They're saying you deliberately flicked it out of bounds. Well, and it, the way that his foot came up, it was not just the deflection that, that got it out. It was a deliberate kick out, which is going to be. Healy, Donatelli gets the free kick. The blast. Lucked out there, they did it. Not the way that that play was set up to run. It was run real slow, and then Donatelli gets taken out so they get another shot at it. And if the ref lets that one go, the counter attack is on for Solis de Sonora. Healy over the set piece once again to the back post. And stepping into the passing lane was Damian Garcia. Now the conference is to determine whether or not this is going to be a defensive clearance, whether the ball should be out wide or at the top of the arc. 
Right, and, and that there's your answer. That's right, and Healy was arguing that he deliberately stuck his foot in there to clear it out like that. But that was more of a deflection. That was more of a uh, just trying to keep the ball from going in. Back to Donatelli, took a deflection. Little rollback, three on three. Ruiz wants it. Segura goes the other way to Tayu. Tayu's shot blocked by who else but Pat Healy. And Venzella is there to mop up. Dos Santos plays it across. Into the corner for Hawks. He was looking to flicks it on to Cal Pipiano. And a great job by Cal Tibiano to get back. Hoxie, what a turn and what a finish. The Blast are back within one. As good of a goal as you will see. Oh my, oh my on that one. Hoxie does a great job of getting in position there. Great job, he's in position. Finds his spot, turns around, and just ripped it. Gaetan Caltibiano lost the ball, sprinted all the way back, won it in midfield, and fed Andrew Hoxie. Finish it off with a moment of magic, and the Blast are back from the dead yet again. Excellent hustle from uh, Caltibiano. And then a, just an excellent turn and finish from Hoxie. Would, would you expect any different in this game? Absolutely not, especially from a player of Andrew Hoxie's quality. Salas plays this one off the boards, and that wasn't a bad piece of invention from him, but couldn't keep his effort down. Gustavo Rosales runs into three Baltimore Blast players. Baez, back to Reynoso. 140 left in quarter number three. Baltimore looking to level the score at seven. Salas. Dos Santos, lovely outlet ball for Lucas Roque. The Brazilian steps in and smacks it just wide. Kanyas being a bit too cute with it. Rayleigh able to get it out wide. And the ball will stay with the blast on the far side. Got Tibiano back out there. Rayleigh makes a run into the center. Now he peels away. Inside for Rayleigh, he couldn't curl his foot around it. Rosales looking to go the other way, but Healy saw the danger. And it's Healy to tidy up once again for the blast. Forward for Roque, throws it into the far corner for Rayleigh. And after a bit of pinball, it's gonna come back to the top Oh, the offensive line for a three-line pass against Solis de Sonora. And that's a tough one there, because now you're just trying to block that ball. The shot was so hard, though, that it, it went all the way across the three lines. Would you like to see the Blast do anything different on these set pieces than what they have been? Oh, sorry, the volume picking up here. Let's get back to it in a second. It's Healy, goes directly for goal, and he almost got the deflection that he needed. Donatelli battling for it. It skips by Baez. Roque pokes it on. The break could be developing here for Solis de Sonora, but Donatelli gets a foot in. And that is gonna be a blue card. The Baltimore Blast will go back on the penalty as Gustavo Rosales is called for charging. And Rosales was fifth in penalties during the regular season and his numbers starting to grow bigger here in the playoffs. Well, and that's the same situation we had earlier in the game in front of the uh, Sonora bench. You have to protect players against these boards. 
And if, if you're going in so hard that you're throwing them in head first, essentially, as we see the replay, throws Healy right into the boards, that's going to be an easy two-minute call uh, for Rich Grady to make. Dantas, Hoxie, Donatelli, Dos Santos, and Healy looking to get another power play goal for the Baltimore Blast and level the score at seven. Here in the Coom in Hermosillo, Mexico, Healy puts it into the danger area. Solis looking for an instant response. Garcia, free kick Solis de Sonora. If I'm Sonora on this power play, I'm trying to keep track of Donatelli because he's He's cost them a couple times as he got lost on that back, back end. Opportunity brewing here for Ruiz with Donatelli with the block. And that will do it for quarter number three. We head into the final 15 minutes. This match coming nicely to a boil. 7-6 Solis de Sonora lead. But Baltimore will go into the final frame with the man advantage. Well, you know... Sonora came out the more, more energetic team, and it showed they jumped out to a three-goal lead. But Baltimore, they remained in it, they ran calm, they looked for their opportunities, and they were able to find them with a great shot from Vinny Dantas, another great shot from Hoxie, and another goal they got in there, and suddenly they're right back in this thing, and it's a 7-6 ball game. There's not gonna be, neither one of these teams is gonna run away with this score in the fourth quarter. And just as brilliant, as those ferocious shots were from Vinny Dantas and Andrew Hoxie was their other goal scored by Donatelli because Dantas with a beautiful ball off the boards. I mean, that's just tremendous thinking at warp speed. Yes, and Donatelli gets credit for the goal, but the buildup to that is really what caused the goal and, and where it goes from. You can't ask for a better ball off the wall and cut through the defense like we had right there that went to Donatelli. And take nothing away from Solis de Sonora. Like you said, the way they came flying out to start this third quarter and open up that gap, it's only going to make Baltimore more and more tired as they have been chasing this game. You know, and that what they need to do, what Solis needs to do, is come out with that same energy and intensity in the fourth quarter. Build this crowd back up. Get it to a, the frenzy pace in there. Hope that they can wear on on the physical attributes, the physical tired uh, fatigue that, that Baltimore has to be feeling after coming down here uh, from Baltimore two days ago. And just build on that so hopefully that they can pull a goal ahead, pull two goals ahead, and hold on for that final push that Baltimore will uh, and has done successfully in this playoffs. You know, what I want to ask you when it got so loud in here you didn't hear me was, and Baltimore's had a lot of set pieces, especially from the 50-foot line at the top of the arc. Would you like to see them do anything different with those dead ball situations? I'd like to see a little bit more uh, organization. Several of them, and in fact, the past two, Pat Healy stepped up to the ball, and he's trying to pull guys into certain positions. And that last one, and I'm not sure, I don't, I don't remember who it was, he was trying to pull his own player back towards the top of the arc. Had the player moved like he had wanted him to, the ball was perfectly placed and it, was, it would have been an easy shot on goal. But instead, he had to reach back for it, take an extra touch, and by that time, so, uh, Sonora had gotten a defender in place. And if you're Luis Jaime Borrego, what are you telling this side that they can do to pull away from the Baltimore Blast? Go back to Sole Soccer. They, they kind of pulled away from it towards the end of the third quarter. Shoot the ball. Get in on it. Those rebounds are going to come. Vanzella is very smart when he when he makes the saves and pushes them to the side. But if if uh, Sonora does what they've done in the past and sends three guys off there and makes and then they shoot from the back line, there's nothing you can do as a goalkeeper. No matter where you parry the ball, there's going to be a Sonora player there. And then if you got a guy shooting like Diego Garcia for William Vanzella, you can't catch those. It's going to have to be a parry situation. So that's what you got to do from Sonora's standpoint. Start shooting the ball, see what happens. Volume rises once again as we head into the final 15 minutes. Overtime in the mini game, huge possibilities here in Hermosillo. Solis de Sonora trying to close things out in normal time, have a seven to six lead 
over the Baltimore Blast. And the Blast starting this fourth quarter on the power play. Gustavo Rosales still in the box for boarding Pat Healy in the near corner. And some confusion over at the scorer's table, just trying to sort a few things out. Mark Server alongside Jeff Houston. Hope you're enjoying this one as much as we are in Hermosillo. You know, I've been looking forward to this, to coming down here for, for quite a while. Since the series, we figured out who was going to be in this series. It's lived up to its billing by far. Great building, great atmosphere, uh, and, and two great teams. Dantas off the boards, Hoxie. The ball will stay with the blast in the offensive end. Fans really enjoying themselves here. A few nervous looks on the faces of some of these Solis de Sonora fans. They're used to their team going into the fourth quarter being up five or six goals. Donatelli's shot is charged down by Hiram Ruiz. You know, we're unable to have our live stats going, but both of these teams just racking up the blocks. It's been strength on strength, but then at the same time, each team has played to the other's strength. You've got Sonora playing excellent defense at times, and Baltimore with some incredible goals. Time on the power play dwindling for the Baltimore Blast. Good pressure, and it's a two on one. Kanyes skies his effort. He brings that down just a little bit more, goes off the boards above, and uh, Hiram Ruiz was wide open on that far side. We could have seen our, our first sure handed goal for, uh, for Sonora. Only short handed goal so far in these playoffs. Scored by Pat Healy. Healy back to Vanzella. Well, and it looks like we've got some technical difficulties on the English side. We're working to get that fixed and get the uh, game feed back on. Vanzella gets it out to Healy. Back to Vanzella, who's shaped out to the left. Over to Healy on the right. Walks up the near side. It's three players in the offensive zone making runs, but it's stolen away. It's a three-on-one going the other way. Ruiz wants it at the back post. He gets it, but stepping in is Dos Santos with a vital intervention. That pass just a little too slow across the goal mount there. Had it gotten to Ruiz with a little bit more pace. Tayu unable to bury the rebound, and it remains 7-6. Forward for Hoxie, but he was behind the line, so it's going to be three lines against the Baltimore Blast. Again, fans, we apologize that uh, you weren't seeing the on the field action, but we think we've got everything fi figured out here. Baez leaves this one off for Salas, right into the wall, which was well constructed. Oh, climbing the ladder to win that one was the blast player in a clash of heads, and right away the trainers will be called out as any time there's a head injury, the referees will stop play. And you can see the concern on these players' faces. All three players knocked heads right there. Scary situation. A 
Looks like Salas. Who saw the replay there. As Salas is being attended to, looks like he might have been cut open. As Junatas Melo, who got really high to get that one, and the two Brazilians clashing heads. And the board is out. It's a stoppage in play, 12.49 remaining in the contest. Junatas Melo walking off. Asala still down. As he did, he checked on his Brazilian uh, friend just to make sure. Well, the good news is that Mauricio Salas, well, he wants to get up, and the trainers are telling him slowly, slowly, yeah. which is the right move. And there's definitely blood. As you can see, the trainers holding Salas's head as he walks off. And applause for Solis de Sonora's newest recruit. You see that. Oh, that did not look good. No, and you can see they. Forehead on forehead. Both went down. So Salas being attended to behind the Solis de Sonora bench. Hope that it's just a cut and nothing more. And of course, the training staff will go through the concussion protocol, which is so important whenever there's a clash of heads. Yeah, you, player health is uh, can't, you know, paramount right there. And they gotta check and make sure not only they can stop the bleeding, make sure he's okay, but make sure that physically he's not showing any more concussion symptoms and that he can play and not have uh, problems down the road. Donatelli over the free kick. Baltimore looking for the equalizer. And Donatelli flicks it over. The goalie restart for Diego Reynoso. 28 year old led the MASL and wins this season with 17. Solis looking to go perfect at home in order to wrap up the MASL title. Not the best decision by Daniel Lopez. Roque's shot is blocked by Roberto Escalante. This ball will bounce back into the hands of William Venzella. Looking for Dantas, hooked away from him. Dos Santos with a quick turn and shot. Reynoso was well positioned. Tayu kills it instantly and has it taken off his foot by Hughes. It's one of the rare times we see Tayu on the ball. And, and that one sneaks in. It's Benny Dantas and Baltimore are level. The ability to turn what looks like nothing into something is what Vinicius Dantas brings to the Baltimore Blast. And we are level in game two of the Ron Newman Cup. And look at that. I mean. He just takes two steps, turns around, takes two more steps with the ball. He doesn't even look for an open space. He just decides to rip that shot as he's going towards the corner. Pinged right off the inside of the post. As my partner in Kansas City would say, ding dong, that one goes in off of the post. Special shout out to Nick Vassos there. Goalie restart for Venzella. Ruiz to go the other way for Solis de Sonora. Play behind Tayu. Ruiz, a combination of Melo and Donatelli to block that one. Segura with the kick in for Solis de Sonora. Ruiz looking for the ball on the far side. Segura across for Garcia, looking to set it up on that left foot of his. Another audacious effort from Damian Garcia. I'm sorry, I had to laugh there. Garcia does this little happy feet there. Looks like he's going to take a move, and then he just shoots it. That man will shoot it from anywhere. 
with any part of his foot. Hoxie. Healy gets there before Tayu. Tried to roll it along the boards. Intercepted by Ruiz. Segura, 24-year-old, tried to get it back out wide. And he's crowded out by Hoxie. And a two-on-one could be developing the other way, but getting back was Raimondo Contreras. Good work by the 28-year-old. Donatelli wants to take this one quickly, and Tayu gets back in time. Ruiz cuts it off. Segura. Lovely turn by the former Las Vegas Legends man. Into Tayu one-on-one, and Vanzella wins. Vanzella nearly got caught in no man's land there. Started to come out, realized he wasn't going to beat Tayu to the ball, and had to backtrack. A free kick on the far side for the Baltimore Blast, looking to take their first lead of the game. Lucas Roque is driving around on the ground in pain as that ball was played back for him. Hit him on the head, he wasn't too happy about it. The 29-year-old's been quiet tonight, but last year in this fixture, he had four goals and three assists. Cal Tibiano's effort is blocked. Stepping in front of Roque is Garcia. One back, Roque looking for his first goal of the evening. Roque still going. And Segura able to work it out of the corner. Donatelli fizzes it in, and Cal Tibiano couldn't get the touch. Tayu. Going one on three, still going Tayu, and it's out of bounds. Tayu has a belief that he could take the ball down and score it every time he's on the ball. Mauricio Salas back on the field. His head is wrapped with a pink bandage. Good contact made by Victor Baez, but right at William Vanzella. Pereira tried to let it run, but Rosales was wise to it, and a free kick for Gustavo Rosales. Some of the Sonora fans out of their seats, they thought there should have been more than just a free kick. Well, and that was just a reckless tackle by Pereira there. He's arguing that, that he missed, and, and uh, the Sonora player maybe uh, might have put a little bit more effort to make sure that it was called. But he came in reckless, so it was the right foul to make, right call to make. Santana battling for it in the corner with Salas and Tayu. Now a bit of a shoving match. But Salas with his hand right into the face of a Baltimore player. It looks like cooler heads will prevail. We talked about the emotion of this game, the emotion that's present in this building. You've got to make sure as a player that you keep your emotions in check. It's okay to have a passion. It's okay to get in there and want to score and win this one for your team. You just got to make sure that you keep it within yourself and not make, especially with a tie ball game at this point in the fourth quarter, you don't want to give the, the other team that opportunity to take advantage of a stupid mistake. And the referee's doing a great job to de-escalate the situation, try and calm things down, rather than just start doling out penalties. Yeah, you, this is a championship game. We want to see five aside. We want to see the best team win out in fair play. So keep the teams out there. Keep the players out there. Talk to them and make sure they understand where we are in this game and what it means to each of their own teams to make sure they stay in the game. And it all ended with a hug between William Vanzella and Gustavo Rosales. There's always gonna be that respect. They may not like each other all the time, but they're gonna uh, respect each other on the field. Gustavo Rosales, of course, 
scored that game-winning goal in overtime for the Monterey Flash two championships ago. Both of these teams have players that have been here before and been in tight situations before. You're going to see some calm heads trying to win this for their team. Vanzella glued to his near post. Clipped across for Salas. Blocked again by a Baltimore defender. Tayu. Good hold of play from Frank Tayu. And one thing about the dimensions of this field is you have to be really careful with your changes because you can get caught, but so far both teams have done an excellent job. Salas goes flying. And again, bodies bowling over each other in the corner. Things starting to really heat up in Hermosillo. The corners are a hotbed for stupid mistakes. And what I like to see there, though, is as the, the teams pile up and as the bodies start piling up there in the corner, people stand up a little bit upset at each other, but teammates are pulling their own teammates back. Keep your head in it. Don't make any stupid mistakes. Just over nine minutes left. We're going to have a contested ball just outside of Vanzella's box. Tayu's calling everybody to come a bit further forward. Uh, looks like it's going to be a free kick for Baltimore. And Tayu just wants the pressure higher up the field. Healy tried to get it out. He's going to have to do it at the second time of asking. Roque brings it down. Melo. Played into the corner. And that was a good interception. Otherwise, Gustavo Rosales would have been off on a two-on-one with Frank Tayu. A well, nice disguise pass into the corner, but it's cleared by Baez. Baltimore keep it in the offensive half and win a free kick on a late foul. The visitors still looking for their first lead of the evening. We're trailing at one point in the third quarter, six to three. Did a great job to bring it back to six to five and then eventually tie the game at seven. Because that one hammered off the crossbar from Tony Donatelli. And Reynoso can breathe a sigh of relief. After they beat Milwaukee in the uh, Eastern Conference Finals, every single one of these players suddenly had a belief that it didn't matter what happened early in the game. As long as they kept at it, they could come out winners in, in this game. Dorame turning. And the foul will go against Dantas. Hughes is up. Now, there's been such a connection, whether it's indoor or outdoor, between Baltimore and Harrisburg. Hughes joining from the Harrisburg City Islanders in the USL. Dos Santos flashes it over. Dos Santos coming over to make sure that Damian Garcia is okay. Big collision of two players hustling hard today in today's game. We've reached the media timeout, 7.48 left in the fourth quarter, and this one can go either way, 7-7 between the Baltimore Blast and Solis de Sonora here in game number two of the Ron Newman Cup Championship. And you knew going into this game, this is the way we were gonna have the, the fourth quarter. It was gonna be tight. In game one, it was a four to two win for Sonora, but it, it was, within a goal, it was even for much of the game. 
here you knew that it was going to be a higher score, but you just had the feeling that it was going to be just as tight. And so far we've seen it tonight. Baltimore has done a great job to stay in it, stay consistent, work their goals. They're good for two, three goals per quarter, and they'll space them out. They work for them. Sonora gets them in bunches. So what they have to do, again, come out shooting, look for some bunches of goals. Well, Baltimore just has to keep pressing because it only takes one to win the game. Me and my broadcast partner in San Diego, Nate Abrea, would always joke that the next goal is the most important because of course it always is. However, I think in this case, it's very, very apropos. Uh, that's a great point because the next goal isn't necessarily going to be the game winner. We may have three more goals after that, but the next goal sets the pace and it sets that all important momentum of where we're gonna finish this game out. Francisco Dorame. Dorame, another great mid-season pickup by Solis de Sonora. Reynoso rolls this one along the carpet. Garcia. Well, not the best pass Garcia's ever made. Two on one for the Baltimore Blast. Hoxie, still going Hoxie, and he played it behind the runner. Hoxie's first touch betrayed him there. It took him a little too far into the corner than he wanted to go. Oh, and it's opened up here. It's Melo. And that shot tailing away from goal. Hoxie battling for the rebound. Able to get it off for Melo. Melo one on one, and he can't squeeze it through. And a foul on Melo for Alejandro Leva. Melo is everywhere tonight. Oh man, and I'm, I'm laughing because that ball couldn't have been in a better spot right there in front of the goal. He just couldn't get it out from under his feet to get a good shot on. Such is a great he... job by Hoxie to get that ball into the path of Melo. Normally that ball comes in and it once it hits your foot, it gives a little space. It seemed to stick to his left foot there, and he couldn't move it over to take a good shot. Healy's irate about something. They're on their feet in Hermosillo. 7-7, seven, seven, 6.45 remaining in game number two of the Ron Newman Cup Championship. Free kick for the blast. Rayleigh able to stop the counter attack, but it's off of him last. Reynoso over the three quarters line. I don't think these fans are going to sit for the final 6.20 of this game. I haven't sat this whole game. I don't know why they would. I imagine there are many fans watching at home that are uh, standing up in their living rooms as well. Three lines back to the top of the offensive zone. It goes for Solis de Sonora. Rosas into the corner. Vanzella comes out to cut down Hiram Ruiz. And a free kick for the blast, much to the chagrin of the Solis de Sonora fans. I believe that was a third foul, wasn't it? Healy, and out of bounds before Roque could get on the end of it. Ruiz pushes it into the corner. Cleared off the boards. Forward for Roque. Roque wants the foul, is not gonna get it. 
Segura finds Ruiz. Into the path of Cañas. Escalante, Cañas. Enrique Cañas clips it to the back post over the head of Ruiz. And off of Segura last, kick and blast with 5.39 left in regulation. Giveaway, Segura in, Vanzella, another huge save. Vanzella cementing his place as one of the great goalkeepers of the indoor game. Keeps it 7-7. Reynoso. Into the corner, Escalante into the net, but it's not going to count as the whistle had gone. And rightly so, too, rightly so. I didn't see who the blast player was, but he jumped up and got his feet undertaken from him. And then Escalante hurt himself as he rifled it into the top corner. As he shot that ball, his foot followed through and found uh, Santana's foot trying to block the shot. Yeah, Santana came flying in. The trainers were called out right away. That was a great goal and great shot. Unfortunately, he had to uh, take out the blast defender in order to get to it, so it does not count. So it remains 7-7, 5.23 on the clock. Overtime, a real possibility. The mini game, a real possibility. Everything still up for grabs here in Hermosillo. Now, if you're Sonora and you see the clock starting to wind down and we're at an even score here, do you start getting flashbacks? Do you start thinking about what did we do last year in this situation? If you're Baltimore, you're saying, okay, we got you right where we want you. Luis Jaime Brego out to check on Roberto Escalante. Good news is that he's walking off under his own power. It was a gorgeous finish. Just it unfortunate was. that he had committed the foul in order to open up that opportunity for himself. It was a great finish. And one that we've seen, I mean, we've seen some great finishes that did count in this game already. Spaces opened up here. And anywhere will do for Victor Baez. Dos Santos. Benzella. Killed instantly by Pereira. Onto his left foot, still going Pereira. Dos Santos. And Dos Santos steps into one, but it's blocked by Damian Garcia. And flying through. No foul given, Segura, and Vanzella stands tall once again. Reynoso, fouled by Dantas. Abayas screaming at the ref, and the ref's just going on counting. Reynoso shoots, and it's pushed over the crossbar by Vanzella. That was a heck of a shot right from his yellow line. Reynoso getting the crowd going behind the clay. Sola staff looking on, corner kick for the Sons of Sonora. Cleared away by Baltimore. Salas will leave it off for his keeper. Four and a half minutes remaining. Can a side find the breakthrough as we've been stuck at seven? Salas heads it down.
was unlucky to see that one bounce over him. And the foul will go against Mauricio Salas. Mark, I don't think the uh, home crowd agrees with that one. Fans literally on top of the field here at the Centro de Usos Multiplace. The capital of Sonora, Hermosillo. Just two years in and already witness to some of the best indoor soccer games you will ever see. This one has been shaping up to be yet another instant classic. And the Blast just trying to calm things down a bit. Looking to possess the ball inside the final four minutes. One back. Salas bandaged head and all. Baez had it stripped away. It's a weird deflection off the boards. And Healy knocks it back to his keeper. Vanzella into the corner. Do you think at this moment either coach should take a timeout just to give his side a breather and set up these final three plus minutes? No, I don't. Because right now if you're Danny Kelly, you're just telling your team, keep at it, keep doing what we're doing. Look for possession, look for the right score. They've got nothing to lose if this goes to overtime. At the same time for Sonora, you just want them to push and push and push. I say that and now Baltimore goes ahead and takes a timeout. But if you're Sonora, you do, you're running on the fly. You're getting the substitutions. You're getting players who are taking quick shifts. But now's the point where those shifts are going to get a little bit longer. You're going to take some shots from further out. You're hoping to catch a defensive mistake. And honestly, overtime doesn't hurt them either because they do score at will sometimes. So for either side, there's three and a half minutes, but I don't think there's an urgency out there to right now find the perfect play. Well, Jeff, I think that timeout wasn't necessarily to calm things down, but just because they do have this set-piece opportunity, want to see if they can draw something up. That's true. And Danny Kelly and, uh, and Stephen Bascom, they can, they've drawn up some good plays in the past. So at this point, you got the ball at the top of the arc. Again, you got nothing to lose. Take that time out, see what you can put together. And one thing the Blast did to prepare for this game too here in Hermosillo is once they found out that Solis de Sonora would be their opponents in the finals, they changed some of their training sessions to smaller fields to get ready for this trip. And I think it's paying dividends here tonight. It certainly has. You can see that they've found a way to use the space, the compact space, and still spread out and find their, their opportunity. Well, they have it here. It's Healy and Dos Santos over the ball. This volume is a deafening level, but it will fall quiet if Baltimore can convert. And the block from Damian Garcia came into tonight second in blocks behind Pat Healy in the postseason. And I haven't checked the stats, but it's probably pretty tight right now between the two of them. 321 remaining. Still knotted at seven. Great save by the fan over there in the stands. When that ball came at him, he saved his beer, blocked the shot away. Well done. That one zipped into the corner. False coming for Lopez, plays it off the boards to himself and able to stab it away is Vanzella. Garcia doing the defending at the other end. Whips it off the glass, but it goes out of bounds. Frank Tayu out on the field. It was King Tayu who won that first game against that Letty Kobaha in very similar circumstances in Tijuana. First order of business is to defend this free kick from Healy. Just didn't get the touch it needed inside the box. Almost a perfectly measured ball and good goalkeeping by Venzella. Inside the final three minutes now and still we're tied at seven. Donatelli, will he be the hero again just like he was last year? And as he was in the minigame in Milwaukee. This is Donatelli. 
He leaves it off. And a good save from Reynoso, who's able to stretch to get it clear. Gustavo Rosales. And Rosales was held up. Fans want a blue card. And they're not going to get it this late in the game. By no means is Rayleigh going to sit in the box after that challenge. They're going to let these players play out these final two and a half minutes. Rosas, Tayu has runners off him. Tayu takes it to the corner. Pereira spins away from Ruiz. Pereira running at Escalante and shoots wide. On a perfectly timed change. Off the boards, looking for the run of Rayleigh into the center. Healy steps in. Cal Tibiano turns. The UMBC man off to the UMD man. Cal Tibiano, score of Baltimore's first goal. Looking to turn provider here. And Hoxie's touch took him into the corner. Still going Hoxie. Hoxie, Hoxie, Hoxie. Cleared away. Tayus one on one with Rayleigh. And Rayleigh with an important intervention. Caltibiano wins it in midfield. Heading toward the final minute of regulation. Will Baltimore find the goal to force the minigame? Or can Solis get the goal that would mean they'd be the ones to lift the Ron Newman Cup? One minute left in regulation. Hoxie. And they're going to say he intercepted it with his hands. Reynoso. The famous Mexican song, Ciolito Lindo, starting to ring around the coom in the final minute of regulation of game two between Solis de Sonora and the Baltimore Blast. This one blocked out of bounds. It'll be a kick in Solis with 36 seconds frozen on the clock. I tell you, Mark, I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm just enjoying the great game. My heart is pounding up here. This has been exciting. It's going to be a great finish either way. This one fired in and a flying save from Vanzella. Garcia, and that shot always rising. And all that took just five seconds. This 31 seconds is going to take a lifetime. And we're probably going to see a dozen shots from either side in those 31 seconds. This is what championship matches are all about. They're on their feet at the coom. 25 seconds. Tayu. It falls to Segura. And it's Tayu! in the coom. What a finish, what pressure, what a game. And there's still 18 seconds left, but for the moment and it's this is joy unconfined in Hermosillo. Frank Tayu, is there anyone else that you would expect to stick that goal away for a Solis de Sonora? He has had an MVP season and he just finishes it off right there. The reigning MVP may very well take that title again as he sticks it home at the back post. Now I will say this, last year in their run to the championship, 
Baltimore went into overtime in Kansas City off the kickoff. Six seconds is all it took for them to put that away. So this game, although Solis looks to have it, it is not over yet with 18 seconds left to play. Well, this crowd is expecting Frank Tayo overly emotional as he ran over to give a hug to his brother Uzi Tayo and the cries of MVP ringing around the coom. Look what it means to Frank Tayo. Solas de Sonora, 18 seconds away from taking the Ron Newman Cup. Can Baltimore come back once again? The sixth attacker is out. Dos Santos is forward. Dos Santos forces it in. We're tied at eight. Adriano Dos Santos, when they needed him most, comes up trumps. I told you, this game was not over. Ball gets pushed to the far, far corner, and that's all you got to do. You got to put that ball on frame and flood bodies in there just to see what happens. And in that time, it resulted in the equalizer. William Venzella back out. The sixth attacker goal. Look at Luis Jaime Borrego, he is heated. He's, uh, he's got some passion there on the, on the bench, doesn't he? I think he has every right to be upset. You cannot let up for even a second. Less than eight seconds now. For the second straight year, we could go to overtime in game two between Soles de Sonora and the Baltimore Blast in Mexico. However, as we just saw, seven seconds, that's all it took for Baltimore to find the equalizer. This game is so fast paced, and especially on this field, where you can score quite literally from anywhere on the field. It just takes the right touch, the right deflection, the right bounce, and we could be heading to overtime, we could be heading into game three, or we could have a champion. There's no telling at this point. All cards still on the table here at the Coom. And how quickly did this place go from deafening to just absolute stunned silence? Well, it, it happened right there. When Tayu scored, this place was nuts. My ears were ringing. As soon as Baltimore equalized, it got real quiet. Now the energy's gonna pick up again as we've seen now you know, Dos Santos willed that ball in. He did, he pushed forward, he pushed forward, made himself big, almost like a keeper, where you just get in front of that ball and make sure that it stays in front of you. In his seventh year with the Blast, all MASL honorable mention. But Dos Santos at the moment, the toast to Baltimore, looking for a few more heroes this one into the corner and for the second straight year we will go to overtime in game two of the Ron Newman Cup championship between the Baltimore Blast and Solis de Sonora as Baltimore looking to become the first team this season to beat Solis here in Sonora and force the mini game and you can see the fatigue starting to set in on some of these players as it's Lucas Roque who cramped up right at the final whistle I mean this is it, this is the last, the last day of, of the season. You gotta leave it all out there. Roque was hurt, he didn't start the season, he was hurt for part of the time in the playoffs. He is the definition of leaving it all out there. He's been out taking every shift, running down every loose ball. My, I, my legs are cramping just watching him. We are going to overtime. Here in the Coombe, one goal will decide 
whether Solis de Sonora are champions of the Major Arena Soccer League or whether we are going to a mini game here in Hermosillo. And we've seen it last year, we've seen it in the regular season. Overtime is not a, a given, it's a golden goal situation. But we've seen it where 10 minutes wasn't enough to decide the game. We've seen it several times this regular season. We may see it here today. Solis de Sonora has fallen twice in overtime here at the Coombe. Once back on January 23rd of 2016 against the San Diego Soccers. And then of course, in this exact situation last year with Tony Donatelli firing home a power play goal off a feed from Pat Healy as Baltimore lifted the trophy here in Hermosillo. The difference between last year and this year, Solis Sonora wants to win this game. They want to get this done in two, uh, in two games and be the first team in the MASL to go all the way to a championship without needing a third game. But if that doesn't happen, they still have that third game to play. And anything can happen. They've been strong on this field. They know how to win games in tight situations. So if this game does go to the third game, they're still right in it, and they, they don't have to get down on themselves. For Baltimore, this is it. You, you put everything out there. You, like we just saw there, you throw your body at the ball. You shoot it, then you follow up, and you hope your teammates, all five of them, are right behind you to make sure that ball goes in. I'll tell you, this place is on a knife's edge. The anxiety, you can almost feel it hovering in the air. Oh, yeah. People are halfway up, halfway down, trying to figure out, is it time to pump the, pump the team? Is it time to just catch my breath? What do we need to do here? I think if you're a Baltimore or a Solis de Sonora fan, you are saying my chest is really hurting. If you're neutral, you're saying this is one of the best games I have ever seen. Win or lose, both teams played an excellent game and an excellent series. And this is what you want from a championship in your league. Will we have a champion or will we have a game three? It's all about to unfold here in Hermosillo, Mexico. A goal for Solis de Sonora means they're the champions. A goal for the Baltimore Blast means we need an extra game to decide our champion. As overtime is underway and Baltimore almost finding a quick goal. Tayu. Tayu, it's a three on one. Over to the far side for Lopez. Lopez, first touch bottom backwards. Lopez looking for space in the corner. Garcia, the sharpshooters are out on the defensive end. It's that stutter step, Garcia gets that half yard of space off the boards and the angle was well played by Venzella. I'll tell you, if it weren't for Vanzella, the champagne would have been put in the Solis de Sonora dressing room a long time ago. He has played uh, one of his better games, probably his best game of this playoff run. Free kick, oh, that wasn't far off from Daniel Lopez. Tayu, beautifully angled ball for Ruiz. Ruiz steps inside. Ruiz, Baez. Last ditch defending from the Baltimore Blast. And a free kick for the Maryland outfit. 8-8 eight, eight with 8.58 left to go in extra time. Forward for Hoxie. Reynoso, Baez, brought down by Dos Santos, 
Hoxie gets it over. Another effort. I'll tell you, I think one of the unsung heroes of this Baltimore team is Gaetan Caltibiano. He's right there in the mix. If he's not trying to dig a ball out of the corner, he's finding a ball on the offensive side and, and getting a good layoff. Long effort for, for Reynoso. Assist. Vanzella struggling, and Hoxie scrambles it clear. And this one off the scoreboard, so it's going to be a defensive clearance. And back to the top of the offensive zone it goes. One minute, 45 seconds gone in overtime. Every shot could be the last. Rosas is gonna call a timeout. Everybody catch your breath. Right there on that restart, they were looking for Ruiz in the corner. As he, he started out wide, came inside, and he was open for a split second. The last second, I believe it was Dos Santos, sees him out of the corner of his eye, takes that one step in, totally ruins the uh, the chance. I had to call a timeout, go back to the drawing board. Well, and it's such an incredible cat and mouse game because Luis Jaime Borrego is saying, okay, we see what they're doing. Let's draw up a play that's gonna get around that. And Danny Kelly's saying, okay, they know what we're doing. Now we need to draw up a new defense and make sure that we're stopping anything new that they're trying. Well, and what's really interesting as we see this timeout, Danny Kelly isn't saying anything. All five bass players, and William Vanzella huddled up inside the penalty box to draw up their own play because they do what they do. There's no secret to it. We're going to stand tall. We're going to block your lanes, and you just try to beat us. It just goes to show the faith that Danny Kelly has in his veteran late inside. Rosas goes directly for goal. Rebound charge down. And back to Reynoso we go. Diego Reynoso into the corner. Be a goalie restart for William Vanzella. And the chance is on here. And the Baltimore Blast have forced the mini game. Juan Pereira with the winner. And for the first time this season, Solas de Sonora fall at home. And Reynoso yep. looks to be shaken up on the play. As Reynoso's down on the ground. I didn't see what happened to him. That play though was started by Dantas who came forward, checked to the pass as we see here. Oh, we just missed it. Just, just the ever slight touch to keep the ball from being a three line violation and put it right on the foot of Pereira. Baltimore blast for the second straight year, win in overtime, this time around nine to eight to force the mini game. We have seven minutes and 25 seconds shown on the clock as both teams make their way to the dressing room. We're gonna step aside, but come back with us in seven minutes as we will set up game three between Solas de Sonora and the Baltimore Blast.
A tremendous reception as Solis de Sonora came out holding hands to show that they're together. And now the Boo Boys are out as the Baltimore Blast have made their way back out onto the field for the mini game. Mark Serber alongside Jeff Houston. And Jeff, I can't remember a game where the pendulum of emotion has swung so quickly from one end to the other. Oh, it's, it's amazing what is going on in this game where you've got just back and forth, back and forth. You got Solis go up by three goals and this thing, if you feel the crowd, they, they feel the championship. Baltimore battles back in it. Solis seemingly has the game winner. And Baltimore ba forces the overtime. And then it's just, not only did uh, they get the game winner in overtime, but then they see their goalkeeper helped off the field. Now, I just went down there and talked to the staff for Solis to see how he was. And apparently, as he came out to block that shot, he took a little knock to the shin. But unless it's broken, he's going to come back out and play. And they don't say it's broken. So he'll be out there. Expect to see Diego Reynoso back in net. The one person you won't see back on the field, Lucas Roque. We saw him. It looked like he was at a little cramp. He has... Uh, he will not be available for selection in this game. He has taken off the uh, the shin guards. He's in a, in a different, taken off the jersey, and he's got ice all around that quad. And the one good thing is that you can make changes to your roster for the mini game, so Baltimore can still run with a full lineup. Correct. It's a completely new game. So we start out zero zero, and we'll see who wins this thing. I think for Solis de Sonora, this is almost more than anything, a real test of their character. They were in this position last year, so close, felt the final hurdle. They had a hand on the trophy, and once again, in danger of falling at the final hurdle. We saw after that equalizer went in that Frank Tayu seemed really out of sorts. Whatever Luis Jaime Borrego told his side, and as they came out holding hands, was it enough to get them back into the right frame of mind to go on and win this minigame? Knowing this Solis de Sonora side, I think it is. And on the other side, I just got to say, no matter what happens in this minigame, I think it's safe to say that Adriano Dos Santos and Juan Pereira won't have to buy drinks in Baltimore for a long time. They have kept this team in it all season long, all playoffs long. And now the question is, will they be able to keep their team in it all the way to a championship? For Solis de Sonora, you, you mentioned Frank Tayu. In one fell swoop, he sees his goalkeeper, great friend of his, down, needing attended to, and they lost the game. Whereas not even 30 seconds of gameplay before that, they had a sure winner. So that's enough to bring him down. But you're right. I wasn't allowed in the locker room, but I was right outside it. My Spanish is not so great, but there was a lot of passion in the speech that Borrego was giving the, these players. And I can tell you, I didn't understand a word of what he said, but I'm pumped to go out there and watch this, this game. So it'll be a great game three, a great end to the season. A 15 minute mini game, no golden goal. We will play the full 15 minutes here in game three. And it is underway the deciding match in the 2016-2017 MASL Championship Series. Let's come down to the extra frame. Now it's interesting to note, this is the first game three for Sonora in this playoffs, whereas Baltimore has gone to game three in every round now. Now that ninth goal to win the game for Baltimore was the first time they were ever ahead the entire time. And you're gonna start to see now, I think, Jeff, tell me if you agree with me, players playing a bit more nervously not to make mistakes rather than to make something happen. You don't wanna be the reason your team loses the title. Especially on the Sonora side where they haven't been in this kind of situation before. Vanzella with his first save of game three. What both teams need to remember and what they're both being coached is that this is not a golden goal situation. As you see a three line violation, this will be a full period. So even if there is a score, it's not over. We'll go back and we'll keep playing and you have the opportunity to tie it up 
and, and eventually win the game. Hoxie is down. Thirty-year-old looks to be all right. Garcia on the right can hit these with his left. It'd be a shot to go back across goal. Instead, it's played into Ruiz, who tries to get it out to Garcia, and it's going to be a free kick for Solis de Sonora, a few yards closer to goal. That's an interesting restart. You send Ruiz. Through the, through the wall so he can just make an easy tap outside. Misstepped and then he got fouled so it didn't quite work but it was a very interesting play. Vanzella happy with his wall. Walks out well beyond his line. Garcia skips through, Tayu lays it off. Smacks off the near post and it's still 0-0 in game number three. And Sonora's number three stripped of the ball. Minute 15 gone in the mini game. It for Tayu, and that was really awkward for Vanzella, but he was able to deal with it. Dantas battling. Sonora backtracking. Still going Dantas. Still going Dantas. And Ruiz does a great job to keep possession for the home side. His pass is cut off. Dantas skips around one. And Vinny Dantas closed off right as he was about to shoot. Space for Junitas Melo. Melo with the little one two. The two players waiting in the center for Baltimore, but the cross never comes. And instead, Tayu takes off. Tayu has Ruiz on the near side, finds him. Tayu wants the return ball. Ruiz takes the shot, and Vanzella did well to make the adjustment on the deflection. Hoxie off the boards, and Calpitiano just couldn't force it home. Cal Tibiano swept that off the foot of Tayu and won the free kick for Baltimore. This might be the first time all night where I've seen Tayu out there and not seen Pat Healy out to defend him. Salas. Gustavo Rosales. He smashes into the boards and no foul given. Three on two going the other way if Baltimore can hurry. Melo, Hoxie just misses. All it required was a touch from Caltebiano. I think Dantas there just testing Reynoso's shin, and you can tell that he's limping, Jeff. Yeah, if he's out there, he wants to win it, just like every other player does. Contreras spins into the corner, fends off another, clips it to the far post, and an important defensive play. Pereira. Garcia loves to hit these. Another shot comes in and Vanzella stretches to save. It remains 0 0 in the minigame thanks to Baltimore's elastic keeper. And Donatelli did just enough to get a touch to keep that from being a defensive clearance. He had just enough stuff in his hair to make it stick up high enough to touch that ball, graze it as it went out of bounds. So another free kick for Solis de Sonora. 11-21 left in game number three. And that one flashes off the crossbar. For Sonora, this is what we saw in the first quarter from them. Putting shots on frame, and literally on frame in a lot of cases. But from everywhere on the field, they kind of went away from this at some points in the game. If they're going to win this game three, they need to keep that up. Another block. Thank you. 
think roads have been closed down due to this block party tonight. You know, Mark, I haven't seen Pat Healy on the field yet in this third game, have you? No. It's definitely something to keep an eye on. It's Reynoso coming all the way out. He has yet to put his full weight on that chin. Still fizzes a shot in, and it's pushed into the corner by Benzella. To the back post, and Tayu didn't react quickly enough. Well, he's got to be careful, especially as players come through. And a free kick given. Pereira saying that wasn't a foul, but then also apologizes to Reynoso. You know, going back to that Reynoso shot, I think Vanzella didn't see it until it just got past the arc because he was not tracking that ball at all, and finally at the last second he saw it. You know, and that's a case of Baltimore's strength. They're filling holes. They're filling those sh passing and shooting lanes, but at some point, especially from a shot from a goalkeeper where you don't expect it from that far out, are you filling that lane and but blocking the vision of your goalkeeper? It may be interesting to see if he takes more shots because of that. Cleared away from Tayu. Raimundo Contreras. Diego Reynoso. Reynoso venturing further and further forward each time he carries it out. Metzela's been dealing with those looping balls into his goal area all night long. It's a good effort to try and keep it in from Gaetan Caltibiano. Kanye's battling for it. You know you've done well when you keep Kanye's quiet. Solis looking to build out of the back. Ruiz flicks it into the corner. Hoxie applies the double team. And it comes back, the shot from Escalante is tipped out in front. Segura gives it back to Escalante. Escalante was trying to find the upper corner just as he did to open the first game. Well, this time no dice and it'll be a goalie restart for William Vanzella. He's gonna take a sip of water first and just try and slow things down a little bit as the Blast have really been on the back foot here in the mini game. And one thing we haven't talked about, it is hot down there on that field. And to play three games, be up and down the field, up and down off your feet and on the ground, and in that black long sleeve jersey, that's something, fatigue definitely can be a factor. Oh, well, that's a great turn, and a tremendous save from Reynoso. And Reynoso, quick to get up. Outlet for Baez. Into the corner, Segura! An absolute show-stopping save from William Vanzella to keep the game at nil-nil. What was it you said earlier in the game? Anything you can do, I can do better. That was a great case of that played out right there between the two goalkeepers. Vanzella into the path of his captain, Donatelli. Donatelli had one goal in game number two. Was pretty much a layup after a gorgeous pass off the boards from Vinny Dantas. Eight and a half minutes left in the mini game. Might not be enough to separate these two sides. That's a two on one if they can hurry and Santana gets back. A 
Well, Santana just didn't have the legs to continue his run down the far side boards. In from Mauricio Salas. Oh, and he came in late. He came in very late. Swept the leg on that one. Welcome back out onto the field, Pat Healy. It's tremendous one-on-one -on -one defending from Healy, wasn't it? He's been great, and that's why most of the game and most of the series you've seen him matched up straight on, on Tayu, why he's had a quiet series. Which is interesting why when the game opened up with Tayu out on the field, it was not uh, Healy matched up with him. Now it seems to be that he's matching up against Salas, against that line. Hughes wanted it on the near side. It's that Baltimore continue to chisel their way down the far boards, and they'll get a kicking. Now Pereira's calling for it on this near side, saying just zip it across the center line. They'll get it inside to Melo. Melo has a go. Hits off of Salas, and that took the sting out of the shot for Diego Reynoso. Oh, Reynoso, almost a bad giveaway. He's able to head it clear. Bought down by Pereira. Pereira, far side. Intercepted. One back by Dantas. Dantas off the boards, looking for Melo in the center. Inside for Cañas. Lovely spin from Cañas to escape the pressure of Melo. Reynoso playing with his back line. Forward looking for Tayu. Tayu has some space. The minute Tayu turned, the entire stadium rose to its feet. But Tayu put the ball into the crowd. You will not see him miss by that much very often. Normally on a turnaround like that, you're going to see it on frame. Three lines, bad, bad mistake from the Baltimore Blast. It's the part, Jeff, where you start to get tired, can't have those mental lapses. Awareness, especially on this field, so important. It's, it's easy to forget the size of this field plays a factor in a lot of things. At this point in the game, there's so much going through your head, you got to keep in mind where you are as you start to lay that ball off. Escalante. A free kick. And I think if that's January, it's a blue card. Melo looks to be all right. Now, I know that this is Sonora, and we just saw 17 goals. But also, the way things are so tight in the minigame, one goal could very well be enough. We saw that between San Diego and Ontario. Yes. So that's going to be a handball against Rayleigh. Especially the way the teams are playing right now. Very tight. Baltimore is looking for that perfect opportunity. And while Sonora started out with some wide shots, with some far shots, they've taken that away a little bit. Baltimore has taken that away from them. And so they're having to work the ball in a little bit more than they had wanted to. Pereira, hero of game number two. Lopez clattered into him. Donatelli. Lopez. Hoxie targeting up, and Sonora able to get it away. Tayu looking to turn. He's got two players policing him, and Hoxie and Dos Santos eventually win out. Garcia tripped up by Hoxie. 
fans motioning for a blue card. Once again, not in the mini game. Headed away from Tayu, punched right back in and sent clear. This one will go all the way through to Reynoso. Reynoso tells everyone to get forward. Throws it into the offensive end. Off the boards for Tayu, just beyond his reach, and Cal Tibiano gets ahead on it. Garcia gets it back to his keeper. Contreras shows on this near side. It opens up the space in the middle for Tayu. Steps on the ball. A good hold of play from King Tayu. Contreras. Vamos Soles is the cry from the crowd. Rosas got it behind Vanzella, but there was nobody on the doorstep for Solas de Sonora. Heading into the final five minutes of game number three. Reynoso well off his line and off the scoreboard. Rare miscue from Diego Reynoso. Ball will come back to the offensive line. As I look at my watch, it's approaching a quarter after one on the East Coast in Baltimore. You think there's a lot of fans that have gone to bed, get ready for their week? Healy goes for goal, and it's crept in. Baltimore land the first blow in the mini game. It's taken almost 10 minutes, but Vinny Dantas gives the visitors the lead. To answer your question, if they stayed up at the moment, it's looking well worthwhile. I gotta imagine there's a few, uh, few thousand people back there in Baltimore still staying up. Doesn't matter what time. When your team's in the championship, you watch it to the end. Exactly five minutes left in game number three, and Baltimore has a one-nothing lead. Five minutes away from their ninth title in one of the most decorated clubs in indoor history. They're on their feet here in Sonora trying to will their team to an equalizer, but the chance is opened up for Santana and he hammers it off the crossbar. Well, Santana, defender, he's chasing up top. Sonora's three running patterns up top. Now they send a fourth as Reynoso comes up. Played into the corner looking for Solace and headed away from him. Corner kick for Solace de Sonora. Now's the spot where emotions can either kill you or bring you through to, to the end. Sonora, by far the more emotional team. Can they keep it with them? Can they show that passion? Reynoso. Rolled into the corner for Cañez. Cañez turns, Escalante wants it in the middle. Cañez plays it off the boards. Escalante unable to get to it in time. Reynoso's all the way out. Reynoso's gonna carry this one as far as he can. Reynoso will have a crack at goal. And it falls for Baez and his shot is stopped by a diving defender. Segura gets it across. Now Mark. We've seen Diego Reynoso come up, play the ball well, take some good cracks at the goal. If you're Sonora, do you bring on a sixth attacker or do you let him play that sixth attacker role? Don't think you want to upset it, especially the way that Reynoso can shoot from distance. And here he is acting as that sixth attacker. Bias off the boards and Venzella played it perfectly. At the same time, you've got so many weapons on that uh, Sonora bench. A timeout with three minutes and 30 seconds left. You're absolutely right. You could bring in somebody like Christian Segura or Daniel Lopez, one of the most technical players in the MASL, to play that sixth attacker role. With 3.27 to play, it looks like I don't see anybody putting on a sixth attacker jersey over there. So they're probably going to stick with uh, Reynoso for the moment. But do you think at this point, 
Borrego's trying to starting to think about it. Oh, he absolutely has to think about it. It's an option that he has to consider, one that's given by the rules of the game, and you gotta take it if you have the opportunity. But also, if you have your trust in your goalkeeper, I mean, you take somebody like Danny Waltman, who can come up in the attack, who's so assured with his feet for the Tacoma Stars, you don't necessarily need to put a sixth attacker out there knowing that they can get into the attack and hit the, hit the target. Baltimore, I think, was that a smart timeout to try and calm things down? It just kind of catch their breath, and knowing that for about three minutes and 27 seconds, they might be bunkered in. And when Baltimore calls timeout, you hardly ever see them go to the sideline. When Danny Kelly comes out with a play to talk to his team on a timeout, you wonder, is he, is he really giving them the play, or is he telling them, keeping their emotions in check, telling them, now is where we fall back into our shell? Danny Kelly, a three-time coach of the year, looking for his eighth title as both a player and a coach for the Baltimore Blast. His side have the slimmest of advantages with 3.20 left in the minigame. The crowd just in front of us are on their feet. Garcia. Off the boards and not giving up a rebound is William Vanzella. If Baltimore do go on to win this, is Vanzella in the running for MVP? There's, there's several candidates. You got Vanzella, you got Dantas. That man right there, Tony Donatelli, has been clutch. Pat Healy as well for what he's done in terms of keeping Tayu quiet throughout the series. Still though, anything can happen. Just under two and a half minutes left in game number three, the deciding game in the Raw Newman Cup Championship. And a foul, and now things really heating up. And instead of going at Lopez, the Baltimore players are just trying to push Dos Santos away. Saying, Dos Santos saying that it was an elbow to the face of Pat Healy. Trying to clear his ball. defender off of him. Does the old arm circle. Grabs Healy right in the nose. Just go back to that run of sheer will and determination from Dos Santos after Frank Tayu had put Solis de Sonora up eight to seven with 18.2 seconds left and Dos Santos took it into his own hands, came down the right-hand side towards the goal that Baltimore is defending at the moment and forced the ball over Reynoso and into the net to make it eight to eight with 11.7 seconds left. And from there on, Juan Pereira would score in overtime to give Baltimore a nine to eight victory and force this mini game, which the Blast are leading with 2.17 remaining, thanks to Vinny Dantas. You know, I said it before, I talked to Danny Kelly in Milwaukee uh, during that season, during that series, and once they came back against Milwaukee from a three goal deficit, every single man in that locker room felt that it didn't matter what happened. They could go down three goals, they could go up three goals, they could be with seconds left and still come out with a victory in every game. Melo just pushes it down the floor and is trying to get off so that fresh legs can get onto the park. Reynoso over the midway line, gets it out wide. Garcia trudges into the corner and just missing the header on the line was the Sonora attacker. Kanye is as close as he's come all game to scoring. Still no sixth attacker. 140 left in game number three. Ruiz trying to get it inside to the target man. Cleared only as far as Hiram Ruiz. Minute 30. They do have somebody over there with a six attacker bib on. Gustavo Rosales. And that's going to be a handball. Call Tebiano the guilty party. Reynoso refuses to come off for the sixth attacker. And no Frank Tayu out on the field either. 1.21 left. 
Rosales with a long run up and another fantastic save from Vanzella. Vanzella got a shutout against the Florida Tropics on December 10th. A shutout in the mini game would be enough as the Blast get a free kick in the offensive end. And Ruiz is defiant that the referee got that one wrong. And there's another case of get your emotions in check. He comes in hot like that on Rich Grady, especially at this time. If he comes in contact with Rich Grady, he's got to pull a card there, and you cannot afford that, especially that player. Sonora cannot lose, afford to lose him for the rest of this match. Our Baltimore on the verge of doing what seemed to be impossible, beating Solis de Sonora twice in one night. A team that until this evening were undefeated at home. And here it comes, the sixth attacker is out as Diego Reynoso goes to the bench. Final minute of the mini game. Ken Solis de Sonora force overtime. Sixth attackers are on the field. Baltimore have built their house. Sonora trying to break it down. Tayu is on the field, and Vanzello won't let him get close to the ball. 43 seconds left. Vanzella threw it three lines. He tried to measure that perfectly and just missed. Well, now they're saying it was just a foul. So a free kick quickly taken. I thought he got a head on it just before it went over the yellow. Tayu, Garcia, into the corner looking for Tayu. Pushed away from him and smacked down the floor. Sixth attacker gets back. It is Christian Segura. 24 seconds left. Salas. And a rip blocked. Salas. Rosales gets on the end of the loose ball, pushes it out for Garcia, off the boards, cleared away. Contreras, top of the box, pushed in, and Vanzella makes the save. Five seconds left, four, still battling in the corner. Two, and a whistle blows. Which way is it gonna go? Last and chance here. If that is against Solis, I this believe, one pretty much over. I believe they're calling it a drop ball. Or are they? Are the fans starting to make their way toward the exits? A blue card has been given. And players have dropped to the ground. Cramping up just 1.4 seconds left. But energy has been expanded to the match here at the Centro de Usos Multiplace. As Junitas Melo has given everything that he can and what an effort he's put in tonight. Mark, Is this going to be a drop ball? Who was issued the blue card? That's what I didn't see. Or perhaps I'm mistaken. Nope, there's only five out there and that's including the sixth attacker. I see there. There's no number up on the board. I don't think they're gonna bother to put it up to be honest with you. 1.4 seconds left. Drop ball in the corner. Into the corner, and the whistle goes, and the Baltimore Blast for the second straight year are the champions of the Major Arena Soccer League. What a game, what a series. The two best teams in the league meet for the, for the final series. The Baltimore Blast comes away the winners. 1-0 in the minigame after a 9-8 overtime victory. The Blast celebrate. 
Solas de Sonora players and coaching staff, including Frank Tayu, inconsolable. They were 18.2 seconds away from claiming the title. But it's the Blast with the ninth championship in their history. The eighth for Dan Kelly. Marcus, I have to head downstairs to take care of my duties down there. I say it's been an honor to call this game with you. Thank you very much. Fans back at home, this was exciting. Thank you for it. my greatest year in this league, and I look forward to it again next year. Well, Jeff, it's been an absolute pleasure. We're going to sign off here in the English version, but stay with us as we're going to have coverage, interviews in English and Spanish, and also the trophy presentation. So keep it right here on MASL TV. But for now, for my partner, Jeff Husted, pleasure working with you. I'm Mark Serber saying thank you so much for staying with us at home for this epic battle as Baltimore take it one to nothing in the mini game, and they are your 2016-2017 MASL champions. From the Cuman Hermosillo, Mark Serber saying good night, and thank you for joining us.